Put it like wow, this that sound. These dogs don't work hard like me, I hope they know by now. Bam, bam, stand my ground. Throw these money trees, go overseas like Percy Tau. I'll make sure you stay around. Quiet when I'm under loud. No negatives allowed, me positivity took a vow. I always play to win, don't anticipate loss. Mind always in the clown, my boy. Never think about the drop, never, ever, ever think about the drop. It is the MKT show. I'm MKT. It is the 21st of September on this Tuesday. Uh, it is starting to get boiling hot uh, in uh, the Republic of South Africa, which is great news. Um, if you are, let's say, for instance, the descendant of human beings uh, from the Iberian region of the world, like uh, the president of all things Portuguese, Paulo Diaz, uh, you're probably starting to enjoy it a little bit more. Paulo Diaz looking good. Uh, Denim meets uh, All Stars. Um, how are you doing there? How are you feeling about 
Um, spring meets summer is, is where we are now. We're in that weird phase where nights are still a little bit choppy. You know, it's a little cold. It's, it's t-shirt and thin top inside the house. How do you feel with your Iberian blood right now? Your honest take. Thank God we're discussing the weather. Yeah. Like there's sometimes when I go, I wonder where the, the tone of the show is going. And then we discuss weather and I go, thank God I spend my time here <laughs> when I could be spending it with smart people. Professionals. Here, here I am discussing the weather. Yeah. So thank you for that. that, yeah. that that's a great uh, temperature check for me, yeah. really. Because a lot of people like in the industry, professionals say don't talk about the weather because what if somebody is watching this in it, Iceland? No, no, it's the most relatable thing. Absolutely. We all experience weather. Sure. We all understand the sort of like gooch season that we're in. We're between <laughs> spring and summer. <laughs> Around the world, everyone understands it. They're, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere, they're between autumn and winter. They are. We all yeah. understand the gooch season. It's a transition phase. A, a man whose uh, descendants come from uh, KwaZulu Natal, where it is also... It's always summer. It, it's always balmy. Um, Johannesburg, weather for you. Census Tebe, uh, how, how does that work for you? It's cold, it's nippy. Your descendants probably turning in their graves. I think it's probably... Last night was a bit hot though. I had to sleep with the windows open, so... Okay. Or maybe maybe my BP's messed. I don't know. You can see guys on from Joburg when they're sleeping with windows open yes. in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> no, I am from Joburg. But what's the story? I mean, I was I was hot. Yeah. Fan. Mosquitoes, nah. not a thing. Nudity. N yeah, yeah. Nudity. That's did, true. Did that too. Are you um? What, what do you call it? Uh, well, a voyeur would watch kind of a. A display we know, we're not going what do you call it awesome uh, venga at your window peeping in yeah so if there was a voyeur well, what do you call somebody who likes to perform for the for the crowd you know yes yes uh, that, that thing are you are you that kind someone of on only fans that's even. it would you go on only fans no. you, you strike me as the type who would <laughs> you've said this before yeah the other day you asked me what i'd be oh the other time we remember we had before the show started with the discussion um would you go on porn and i told you no uh, but what about OnlyFans? It's the it's that's porn. the gateway. Senzo, can can I run your OnlyFans? I'll split it. I reckon we can make forty grand a month off your OnlyFans. Imagine Senzo. Yeah. Like I don't I don't imagine this, but imagine Senzo <laughs> shirtless holding puppies. Imagine that, and you got to pay like five dollars to see that. You don't want some of that. What's the story? I want some of that. Senzo, a mentor of mine says, stay open to outcome. So no, no OnlyFans for you. It's, we're in the creator economy, Senzo. That's what, we're in the content space. Then you guys do it first and then I'll follow you. No, 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 but we already know what's going to work. I'm not the handsome guy. Yeah. I know how to manipulate and use the handsome guy's handsomeness for my own gains. See, puppies, dude. I can get puppies. All I need is your shirt off. Nah, that ain't going to happen. The greatest gifts bring with them the greatest responsibility, Senzo. Shouldn't have been born handsome. Otherwise, uh, OnlyFans now an option for you, but you're saying, hell, get that the hell out of here. I don't need it. COVID economy, who cares? Gotta be careful being a handsome guy because ugly guys like me will take advantage of it. That's true. And you will be a handsome corpse. Yeah, broke at the end of it. <laughs> Do you, but the, hey. A nude life with dead <laughs> puppies. Imagine. <laughs> you ever thought you'd be a, called a handsome corpse? Imagine. Oh, that scares me. <laughs> so what? Okay, now quick, quickly let's get into it. I mean, death, obviously everyone's favorite subject is, does it scare you that you, you won't be this handsome in the grave? Do you ever think that? Nah. If you're dead, you're dead. What are you going to do with dead ass handsome guy? Dead is dead. So necrophiliac, stay away from uh, Senzo in his grave. Ah, Senzo Gloria, I mean. <laughs> There's no translation for that. All right. Paolo, great to have you here. Uh, Senzo, who, who will be, he may or may not be a handsome corpse. There's no way for me to know that. He's never died according uh, to everything <laughs> I've observed. Um, this is a sports show, by the way. <laughs> so, well, I'll tell you uh, something I should have done yesterday, but because I'm not a professional and we were joined by a legend, um, where I was right, where I was wrong uh, from things that happened last week, uh, we'll get in some social media. Harry Kane, boy, oh boy, what a weekend for him. And then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of recap what happened on the weekend and uh, we'll have a bit of fun. Um, what I'm looking forward to, and I just want to announce it now because then we don't have to do it again and people don't say I forgot. Tomorrow, uh, mountain running legend Ryan Sands joins us. And we'll continue our march forward towards the Art African Trail Run. Really, really looking forward to having Ryan on. And uh, yeah, unpacking. Uh, he's a 100 mile monster. If you don't know Ryan Sands by now, I don't know what I can do for you. All right. Great show coming up. Uh, the MKT show coming up after this. Thank you.
A sports show, a weather show, a necrophiliac warning. That's where you are right now. There, there is no other show that is that. We are all of those things and so much more. And so much more. I'm trying to do a radio like back in the day when uh, like Kreivachen and guys like that were doing it on South African television. You don't know who that is. I can't really help you. Uh, Agenda as well. I forget what his name was. Uh, still great hair. Freak de Pria, I think his name was. Focus on the Freak. Yeah, yeah. Freak de Pria, absolute legend of the game. Those are the type of guys that were doing it. That's how they would talk for cadence in radio. So, Paolo, you would know that. I mean, a lot of guys still do that. Classic radio guys. It's always nice to hear um, classic radio guys doing it because I think Howard Stern's kind of ruined it for those guys because Stern has never stuck to a single classic broadcast rule, I think. And everybody just... I mean, he got given $200 million, basically, but it, and, and they built Sirius XM around him. Uh, I mean, you'll probably know more details than me. But he's never stuck to a radio rule in his whole entire life. And everybody keeps saying, oh, a good broadcaster should have sounded like that. Very tough when a man has made a quarter of a billion dollars just talking, which is what Stern does. It's very jarring. Like, what's a good broadcaster? What's a traditional broadcaster? Because I don't think if you had a year... Those old school radio voices, those golden voice, yeah, top of the charts coming up, number one of <laughs> the board. Like if you have to hear that now, you go, "What the hell is this guy doing?" Like, yeah. It sounds ridiculous. So I think guys like Howard Stern, if you take Joe Rogan's the biggest podcast in the world, and there's nothing traditional or formulaic or uh, like classical about him. So what's a good broadcaster anymore? A good broadcaster is somebody who talks about stuff you can relate to. Yeah, it doesn't matter his style. No, that's true. And there's no distance between because like Joe Rogan or Howard Stern, they talk like we talk and that's relatable. They're just normal dudes. Who would you rather be, Stern or, or Rogan? Because Rogan's profile, he I was listening to him talking about, like now he's starting to go full circle of going, he's so big now, Spotify, he's mainstream now. And he says now it's weird because now people, even in, now that he's moved to Texas, people are starting to recognize him. I'm not sure people know who Howard Stern is. Yeah, but Howard Stern's... Howard like, St- I, I, I don't think the, the, the Instagram kids know who mm. Stern is. We know who Howard Stern is. But do, do 21-year-olds who, when you're walking in the road, come stick a camera in your face know who he is? Yeah. They probably do, though, because that, guy, that guy's bag. So, I think in the States, you definitely know yeah, he's, he's who he is. Yeah, I, I don't think it ever transcended. Yeah, people may know him as like a judge on America's Got Talent. Yeah. And, and like, if you go, oh, Howard Stern is just a judge on America's Got Talent. It's like, oh my God, he's probably the best radio broadcast in the past 50 years. They built Sirius XM for him. And it's so strange. I was having a conversation <laughs> just yesterday with somebody about, you know, this, this, this whole Howard Stern, Joe Rogan versus like a lot of the personalities around here um, out of traditional broadcasting. And it's so interesting how the power has totally shifted to great guys who do it but do it in their own way and and i mean while we're here is that it's always an interesting dynamic you, you know america makes things famous you know like you got to say is they built largely hollywood is built for no other reason if you're good looking handsome talented outrageous come here like here's a beacon come here it's not built for anything else and i think that makes them unique is like do you think south africa and maybe even Africa, because we, we're quite conservative. And I, I love living here. You, you, you know, is my generation was conservative, but some of these young kids are doing awesome stuff. Do you think we, we like ready? I don't think we're ready for a, a Joe Rogan. A uh, Even Stern is mm-hmm. quite offensive to us still. And compared to what Rogan's up to, Howard Stern is a church mouse, in my opinion. You, you, you know, is, Do you think we're ready for that kind of figure? You know, you already see, and this is just my observation of somebody like Mac G, for example. Oh, mm. Great for him. But, right, here's a kid, and already I'm noticing the temperature starting to turn against him. Mm. Because he's, people feel like now he's caught in controversy, and it's almost like as if there's not some major revelation out of every interview. Uh-huh. It's, it's just, you know, it's like that, I'd love to see where he goes next, because 
you're bo- you're a shock jock type of personality. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I listen, I love the kid. I worked with him before. I, I work with him now. Yeah. But it's like it's very interesting to go. How does the audience turn? How does the mainstream? And I think what will happen is he'll have a core that will become militant over him. Yeah. Uh, and the the mainstream will be like, oh, that's it's just a bit a too bit, much. It's just a bit much. It's very interesting just to see how it's the, and and Howard Stern and Joe Rogan and Gareth Clough and everybody would have been at that point where they go, which side do I step? Yeah. You know, am I ha- where do I want to go? Yeah. And it's tough for guys like them. I mean, Gareth, uh, Mac G, and whoever else may be prickly because the ugly truth is. And I don't think it's because South Africans are, are just uh, uh, misers. It's just we don't pay for stuff. You, you know, it's tough to say this about our consumers, but the, the literal truth is the data, and, and I'm saying this the da- because I'm in this world, the data tells me, and the last time I checked, it's single percentile on premium uh, consumption uh, in terms of Spotify, in terms of YouTube mm-hmm. in South Africa. So it tells me we, we're not ready to pay for stuff and we... Again, people put their money where there's value, right? And we, we don't quite see that. And so for me, it's interesting what he'll do. You know, Mac is incredible. Like, like he, what he's done is just insane against a tirade of uh, sort of, you, you know, ugh, ugh, South Africans. We just like, as soon as you step out. And mm. some of the things he'll, he'll say is, it's so refreshing to know that someone will pay for it. And now, I mean, he just, what's the deal he just got now? I, who, who, channel he? He's gone on to Channel O. Oh, yeah. so, so, so has he moved no YouTube anymore, just all Channel O? No, it's no, still no. YouTube. It's just, I, I believe I spoke to him, it's one interview a week. Yeah. So, you know, he does celeb interviews. Uh-huh. I think it's the celeb interview. Mm. The weekly one goes on to Channel O. On to Channel O. So now he has to clean it up a bit. But mm. like his chat, let's say his chat, like with his colleague, that doesn't go on Channel yeah, O because gets... if that did... <laughs> so, so is he going to... But listen, I mean, again, it becomes like, I think you've said, said it brilliantly, is... Also, and I, I do see it a lot, is it, often that'll, that'll come from Twitter, the cool kids, is like, I always say to artists, sell out. Like, Mac G's done enough now for free. Sell out. I, I, hope, he, I hope he gets a 10-year deal mm. with Channel O, and that's cool. Make it for that. Because how old is that guy? Like, 20. Mm. He, the guy looks like he's 15 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Mac G. He can come back and be Rogan in 20 years' time. Like, don't focus on Twitter, yeah. as though he needs my advice. But I hope he keeps going and I hope Channel O give him all of the money in their bank account. And, and he makes it. It's like, don't get uncomfortable because people say, you know, because you know what the cool kids are going to say. Oh, he yeah, sold out. Excellent. It's a job I, at the I end hope, of the day. I hope he has, to, he has enough money to buy a whole road in Sandhurst. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, I'm happy for him. Because what does that mean for guys like us coming up? When There's it's potential there, yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm, You're right though. I'm because, happy for him, dude. Because as well, the thing is like, you know, if people are like, oh no, he sold it. I'm like, okay, then if he isn't going to sell out, then he should be the only one releasing his music. You can't tell me that. It's like this whole argument. Oh, no, that, that rapper went mainstream or that guy went mainstream. No, he, he's doing it so people can listen to him. So, like, also, my, money over everything. We idealize the, the, the poor artist. It's like such a romantic notion. Or it's, and not really for the artist, for us, because we want to be the guys who are the hipster vibe. Yes. I only want to know that artist. That I don't want to album. share him. Yeah. Yeah. And then once I have to share him, it's like, oh, I'm not into him. But then again, they say like, especially like in music terms, they say like the easiest album to make as a musician is your first one because you've had your whole life to make it. Mm. They say once you fo- to follow that up, then let's see let's what you're really about. You know what I mean? Maybe I should release an album. <sighs> nah, but you... you but not uh, actually, what, what, mu- what music? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What music would you... Would like you a, no, like a conceptual art album. Like your inner monologues, an album yeah, of your actually, inner monologues. Actually, yes. Yes. Oh, that's the it, yeah. Chronicles of Mbulelo. Well, but it's uh, but part of it it has to be a visual album because like a pig in a shopping mall but all black and white of course right P- a pig in a shopping mall wearing Gucci high heels you know what I mean because then I'm, it speaks to consumption versus you know passive consumption what does the pig represent oh, man. Don't, don't 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 I will not allow it James yeah. while you're there James I just want to say get on the phone. Why aren't we booking out Wanderers right now? Yes. Umbelelo standing in the middle in a plastic bag. Yes. Like talking about his conceptual pig in Gucci Hills. Are you joking? Are we doing this? Why are we not doing this? Nothing's happening at Wanderers now. Okay. I'm, Why are we not doing this? It's so you're going, to be, you're going to be like that? <laughs> no, are we doing it? Uh, Paulo sounds serious. Uh, James, what, what do you think? Are you getting as excited as I am? Let's do you want go. a number? I got it. I'll yeah. give you a number for Wanderers right now. No. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> at first I didn't agree because I wouldn't buy your music. No, well, it didn't have to be music, but shout out to you not supporting me, yeah. But but the, now I heard that it's 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 conceptual art. Yes. So I'm down. We should make a statement. Now, James, you're a creative conceptual art. You want to maybe, uh, for those of us who don't know, uh, where did that start? How did it start? What's the guy's name? Should we... Um, as you know only too well. I uh, do, but I'm actually just going to let you you explain it because I, I want you to have your moment in the limelight. <laughs> Humility. A guy yeah. called Marcel Duchamp did something very, very interesting a long time ago. He, he coaches in... France. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, descendant Not of to... Didier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you've... It, it, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, it's that's the classic show. Marcel Didier <laughs> dilemma. It's a sports show. It, it's I mean, classic. You know. When you hear Duchamp... Uh, <laughs> it's, Your it's mind automatically moves there. Yeah. Easy mistake. Easy On a mistake. sports show, I thought... We, the, you know, we're talking to Sean. It's a tip of the hat to do. Yeah, no, that's right. uh, that's very true. Uh, so, but uh, another Deschamps, uh, he um, he he put a toilet seat, James, as you know, only too well, and he uh, kind of displayed that whole thing, the the, the birth of modern day uh, conceptual art. And as you know, only too well, certified lover boy, James, your favorite artist, uh, Drake, obviously, he had a guy who, and uh, Drake and I have a lot in common. I just want to say, oh, do you? Yeah, we do oh. both. Have okay. the modern day conceptual artist guy called Damien Hurst uh, designed that cover um, uh, from Certified Lover Boy, and I do have a little cabinet in my house made by him. Uh, sold a shark in uh, Maldehyde for fifty million pounds, James. This uh, uh, Damien Hurst guy. Your thoughts there? Is is that the same shark that was in Australia, the one in Formaldehyde? Um, I, I actually haven't checked that shark's um, sort of movement location. Um, but yeah, there are sharks in Australia, so there's no reason for me to think that no, probably just, the apex of the sea couldn't go to Australia, pop on over, say, oh, the salmon here is disgusting, I'm going back to South Africa. No, the, the reason why I was asking that, because there was an abandoned um, uh, like water park in, or an aquarium, sorry, in Australia. Okay. And they went back there and there was this great white that was just like there in, in one of the tanks. In are you joking? Park. I'm serious. Like still alive. No, 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 no. Guys. How long ago? Were, how long ago did they leave this animal? I I have no idea how long it had been abandoned, but wow. um, it was just they they went there to investigate this whole abandoned aquarium thing, and yeah. there was the shark in one of the tanks still. Oh my god, That's that is one of the most is, tragic bro. things I've ever heard. Okay. Really, I, I Australians? Huh? I what are you gonna do? What, what a bunch of savages! Uh, yeah, since what you got? There must be this. So you've heard of Salvatore Guerrero? Yeah. Oh, look, go ahead. That guy, that guy's the man. He sold an invisible statue. Yeah, no, like eighteen thousand dollars. No, re real thing. I mean, these conceptual guys are—they <laughs> are now statue. taking the Mickey. Oh, and he's being sued by another invisible artist. Your headline says, is "This artist silly." It is. It artist is. Yes. Silly. No, no, enough said. But so, I mean, so you just get, so they sell you nothing. They give you a certificate. Say, you oh, congratulations. You own a piece of nothing. Yeah. No, no. It's a conceptual That's, art. It's, buying it's NFTs. But you know, who's going to do that one day. Because they said Kanye West very soon is going to make an album and the CD cover is going to be nothing. He's going to go, you have to imagine the music. And you know the, Stanye, the Kanye diehards, they're going to say, yeah, I can hear it too. But we're there already. <laughs> like, like we are there already. Like with a lot of the music that's out now is you have to imagine that it's good, right? In order for it to be good. And maybe that's me, the old head, is it's always been like that. It's like some of the nonsense that's out now and it's just topping the charts but are you, you see, kidding me but you see now you watch movies like Zoolander and then they've got that line derelict and you're just like you know we're not far off from this hey art art imitates reality I mean they are way ahead of it uh, in the in the comment section on YouTube Pimo says uh, I'd rather listen to the sound of paint drying rather than listen to the inner ramblings of Mbolelo now that's the kind of hater aid I would put in as kind of the filler you know on the, on the album as the pig walks away <laughs> You, you, you know what I mean? Society, fashion, Bulelo's passive. Rambling. I agree with that comment, though. <laughs> I don't, I don't right. hate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to something I do know about. It's um, it's sport. Uh, well, welcome in the back there. Give me some of that music as I do every. Uh, well, it is Tuesday, um, but I do it every week. I'll tell you where I was right, and where I was wrong. Where I was right. Uh, Frank Lampard getting sacked. Um, now listen, footballs. Are, it's a beast, by the way. Great graphicking by James there. Um, but where I was right, Frank Lampard getting sacked was correct, and it, it, it's difficult to 
to not be this guy, but I'm a Chelsea fan and it, it, it did tear a little piece of me. Number one, I've never get, forgiven Frank Lampard for playing for Man City and getting that goal. Um, but his firing was correct, is he had all the weapons and the team didn't look any different 18 months into the thing. And I, I kept saying it. And of course, I went to a place that's reliable and researched called uh, Twitter. And I've been saying it since the beginning of the season. The team didn't look any different than the 4-0 loss we suffered to, uh, or 3-0 or 4-0 loss we suffered to Man United on opening day two seasons back. So I'm sorry, you, you can't spend a 250 and not look different 18 months into the project. Uh, Lampard going absolutely correct. Where I was wrong. Now, I don't want to overreact to what happened, but it's happened too often now. David Moyes isn't the top, top level. Now, that's not to say he can't get mediocre to be excellent, because he did that at Everton. Uh, United, we saw how that went. Sociedad wasn't never going to work. Look what he's done at West Ham. But that decision, uh, you know, I mean, what are we doing bringing on the captain with no touches in the 94th minute in probably what is still the biggest TV show in the world. It's not only football, it's Manchester United. So you're on the biggest stage and then you are absolutely, we are zooming into everything you do because you're playing Man United and he does that. I mean, Mark Noble was in a no-win situation there. David Moyes, not top, top level. Top manager, let's be honest. But that's the difference. Mourinho doesn't do that. Fergie doesn't do that. The great ones don't do that. I'm sorry. And sport is moments, folks. And I'm afraid David Moyes uh, proving Man United right. Where I was right, Everton cannot compete with what they've got at the back. The, the, the Mina Keane thing isn't going to work. Because what they've got going forward is, if you actually watch them play going forward, they are quite scary. Damari Gray, even if I get this for six months, but Richarlison, for all of his nonsense, is he's now maturing. He's now turning into that guy. Calvert Lewin, uh, he's got hamstrings made of polystyrene, but he's real. He's he's probably as close to a baby Drogba as I've I've ever seen. So I really really like what I'm seeing there. But you can't have Keen and Yeri Mina at the back. I mean, three no on the week. What was that? They're not going to compete. Keen is your captain. I mean, it worked just because it worked for Man United. doesn't mean your, your Keen's going to be the same thing. That, that ain't going to work. Uh, where I was wrong, uh, hey, Australia can play rugby. O Australia can really, really play rugby. Is that the Springboks, probably a little fatigue after uh, sort of 15 months of dominating the world scene, uh, COVID coming off uh, a high pressure um, Lions win. But other than that, I mean, Australia, you got to give it to them, is they're showing up, right? And that's what matters. They could have been crushed and been forgotten after what the All Blacks did to them. I was dead wrong there. Where I was right, Man United cannot win with Fred and McTominay. Um, folks, I'm sorry, Cristiano Ronaldo knows it. Um, and what it tells me is Ronaldo will probably give it a second season. But what he will ensure is that they get a for real, real guy in the middle there. Paulo Diaz has called it Donut FC, is that it's the, the, the false midfield. And it ain't going to work. West Ham shouldn't be dominating you. I like Suchek. But that first half is not acceptable if you're Manchester United. Because, folks, let me tell you something what, that you do in football, especially when you play away. You neutralize the midfield. Generally, what that does is it quiets the away crowd. That first half nearly got away from Man United because Fred and whatever was happening in the middle there, Pogba, they couldn't take control. I mean, Bowen was running a, a mock in that first half. That is unacceptable at Man United. You know what Man United pay you for? It's not when you 3-0 up at Old Trafford and you're poor Pogba and you're doing outside of the foot. They pay you when you go to West Ham and it's buzzing. Put your foot on the ball and quiet the crowd. The great Roy Keane did it. And to be honest, I don't know if anybody's done it since Roy Keane like Michael Carrick has done it. You go away, you're a metronome and everybody keeps quiet. And then we play our game. And it took United and United got away with that first half a little bit. The second half, the power, the quality of Cristiano Ronaldo, they, they, they blew them away. But McTominay and Fred's not going to work. That's just not going to work at Man United. At West Ham, McTominay, absolutely. But not at Man United. Uh, it ain't going to work. Where I was wrong is Cristiano Ronaldo still has that pace and power. Listen, I, I, that's what I worried about him coming back. But he's still blowing by defenders. It's, I stand you still, I go by you. And you know when I know a, like a player is still there? Is that when defenders at that level try and come back at him, you're still bouncing off Cristiano Ronaldo. I saw two or three where I thought, my God, that guy's 35 plus. That is that is scary. I was wrong. Ronaldo still got it. And that's a scary, scary proposition if he stays fit. Where I was right, uh, Grealish will take some time because he's a complicated guy is that he wants to be the golden boy. Pep Guardiola doesn't do golden boys. Even Leo Messi had to have some responsibility. <laughs> and Jack Grealish is learning very, very fast is that, by the way, 
get involved. You're part of a team. We expect you to tuck inside when we don't have it. And if you watch that draw on the weekend, Southampton, by the way, second big draw with Manchester clubs this season, is that Jack Grealish doesn't do enough without the ball. And we know Pep will not tolerate that. Ask Zlatan Ibrahimovic if you've heard of him. Uh, it'll take some time. Uh, where I was wrong, Man City are erratic. I thought Pep would come this season, revenge season. Everyone's telling me I don't have a striker. They hit, hit the ground running. What's going on? They didn't have a single shot against Southampton at a home. Ugh, gross. And got away with it. Carl Walker. Wowee. Uh, where I was right, um, Jesse Lingard showed me everything that he is against young boys. Folks, that's what talent will do is uh, they'll turn it on and then they'll do that as well. Is Again, that's not Man United level because those are the moments I pay you for when you wear the Man United badge. When we're down to 10 men, don't do that. We take 1-1, one, one, we steal it, we go home, we beat them 8-0 at home. That's what happens at Manchester United. So I was wrong. Je oh, I was right about Jesse Lingard. Where I was wrong, Jesse Lingard against West Ham <laughs> has come on and be Man United class. Because, folks, what you got to put in your mind is that it's not just about the goal. The goal's terrific. It's the moment. He hits that over. Ronaldo's in his ear. Pogba's in his ear. Why didn't you lay it off for the cross? It's terrific. If you don't, hey, Jay Lings isn't for everybody, but that was top, top draw, considering the moment, considering the week he just had. So in one week, I was right and I was wrong. Uh, Jesse Lingard. Um, Paulo Diaz, your, your mate, Jesse Lingard against Young Boys. Uh, I, I haven't actually had a proper chance to talk to you about it. What are we doing there, Paul? Lingard is the smiley version of Ravel Morrison. <laughs> got so much talent you just want to you excuse a lot because of the talent yeah but the mentality isn't there like who's jesse lingard the idiot that does that against young boys or the guy capable of that against west ham mm, mm, mm. be be in them even if you're in the middle yeah because he veers too much to either side he's not united class i'm i'm sorry he oh listen what is united class anymore nobody knows that's fair that's a listen that is an underrated statement, what you've just said there, is that everybody, and we, we're getting old. It's like when we say United class, we're still thinking David Beckham. Mm. But actually, you had in between, you've had Falcao and Di Maria, and it's been ugly. What is the standard? It's been a drop-off. When, when our bench looked like a Mexican drug cartel. Yeah, that's, <laughs> uh, I, I remember that whole thing. Um, What's happened the, there? The Mexican drug, drug cartels are at least deadly. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> <true>. <laughs> so it looked like one. Yeah, it looked like didn't one. Didn't act like one. Um, you know, and, and, uh, we, we did have a little bit of a chat about it that Solskjaer's going, you know, um, hindsight, you do kick the ball out, but I'm going, if a 28 year old pro who's had hundreds, a couple of hundred time games in yeah. the Premier League yeah. for Man United, you know, doesn't have in his brain in that situation, 10 men down last minute to boot the ball out. When's he ever going to have that in his head? And it's almost like, and, and I, I mean, listen, you could probably get slaughtered for this, but it's like... Because Lingard's come out and spoken about his mental challenges and mental issues and that, yeah. he's sort of like shielded himself from criticism and judging him on the football field. Yes. And it's almost like, I understand the world we live in, but at the same time, you've got to perform as a footballer. And it's it's going, I don't know what Jesse Lingard is. And you should he should be open to criticism because he lost us the game against Young Boys more than one Bissaka. It was moronic what he did. I hope we don't go there. That, that's such a good point. It's like, it's tragic that people suffer from mental health stuff that is not an excuse not to be because do you stop taking the 60 million uh, 60 000 pounds a week because we don't pay you for that it's on 120 we pay you to go and perform on a football field you must existentially view the two separate it is tragic that you have mental health stuff that's awful then take a break pal and we need to stop paying you like i don't want to hear that Paulo. that is such a dangerous slope we're on in society across the board is that we need to be able to separate that. Like, Jesse, I'm, I'm not giving him a break. Sorry, lots of people have as, mental health challenges. As long as you're playing, you're, in, you're there to be hit at. You, it's just, you're not playing for Scunthorpe. You're playing for Manchester United. But you've said this before as well, because the, th the thing is, soon, whilst you're still there, you must be present, because the thing is like, okay, if you're not present, then what are we doing? You're actually right, because they must separate the two, because whilst you're here, be here present. But like, what goes off the field, goes, yeah. goes off the field. Um, what's it? I think what's important to, to keep in mind as well is that toughness is a skill. The mental toughness, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, and, and it is a skill 
to to be able to deal with the unimaginable pressure you have to deal with at Manchester United, right? And it's almost like he's done the hard part because it's not it's not hard playing for Manchester United now. It was hard getting into the first team. Well said. How many other kids? So I'm telling you, Jesse Lingard came across at least 50 kids way better than him. Yeah. But mentally, he was stronger to keep getting to the next level. So he's already done the hard part. This is quite frankly easy now. But the thing is, like for me, and I'll go back to it. It's do you know it's, what's 90 percent of the job? Mm. In in mental toughness, and I, you're starting to see around people that are very like demanding, is that they are present in what they are doing. They are present. You can only do one thing at a time. Well said. Because you're, 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 if you're not present in something that you're doing and your mind starts to you know, switch off a little bit, yeah. everything can... It's, it's, it's like a house of cards. So mm. you have to be present in what you're doing. Jay Links. But take that aside. I mean, Jesse Lingard, I don't know what he is. What the hell? <laughs> 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 so Paulo Diaz is going through all of it at the moment. By the way, a lot of people saying... Uh, wondering whether uh, his swag and a lot of people are, are me would his shoe game be on point again would he wear the same, same shoes I've seen before absolutely not not Paulo Diaz those shoes are unbelievable he's, he's got he's got the classic all-star look today um, and uh, I, I mean just just I mean just incredible did you do uh, I mean this we is might the cool dad though this is the, the when you talk about cool dad is this the look that you're going for all right I'll tell you what after the break we will talk about we will ask a man who is a dad and, uh, you know, it's not up to me to decide whether Paolo is cool or not, but we'll talk about cool dad status and whether I'm right or Senzo is right on an incredibly important topic. Ladies and gentlemen, the MKT Show. Thank you. 
There it is, swag game on fleek. Uh, cuffed, uh, you got to cuff your own pants, but those are That's cool, Carla Diaz's shoes. Let, now, let, let me tell you something. Scuffed. A little scuffed, I mean, nobody can see it. They are unbelievable. Now, Paolo, um, if you haven't been with us, folks, uh, by the way, if you're on YouTube, click like. That's the up thumb. Um, otherwise, the down thumb is if you hate my face or uh, the idea that I will put a pig in a shopping mall and uh, make it in black and white and make it an album. Probably uh, get the same guy who did Kanye West album to do post. I'm not sure how I'll pay for it, but I'll figure that out. Um, if you haven't been with us, though, Paulo Diaz will use his toothbrush um, to clean his shoes. Uh, probably time he should be, I don't know, uh, you know, sort of working on my album, which hasn't come out and we came up with just now. Probably should be uh, should have thought of this, Paulo, uh, my album and stuff like that. But no, you've got a toothbrush on white shoes and those shoes are unbelievable by the way converse classic all-timer but how do you get them that white i've got a foam called dry wonder oh dry wonder is dry, dry wonder is the real deal it's a foam that you spray on okay and you let it settle and then it's it's wonderful how it dries that's why it's called dry it wonder. cleans your shoes without water dry wonder dry yeah wonder it's for like if you have like sweat or like leather shoes because like if you have like leather shoes like genuine leather shoes you don't want to be putting like handy and your detergent on them because like it goes funny and then it makes the mess up the leather dry wonder is yes, there every time you guys come here and we talk about sneakers i i find out a whole new part of of, of that whole world because in that sense i'm the opposite of you guys I, I think we have a lot in common and the only thing is that we like football i mean you guys smart enough to actually be nice people. So you both have two beautiful ladies that have decided, okay, you can hang around. So we're different in that sense. I'm not as smart as you guys there. Um, you guys are both handsome. So we're different there. But football, we do like. That's probably the one thing where we can identify. The sneaker thing, no idea. No idea what, what you guys are doing the there. The thing is... Dry wonder. Also, the thing is, we're all very opinionated people here. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, dry wonder. I didn't... I, I, yeah, what? Yeah. This is where you come to. So learn. where do I buy Dry Wonder? Like online at no, my cousin's it's house. Supermarkets. So supermarkets. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's a thing that sneakerheads yeah. know, yeah. eh? Yeah. Good God. All right, Paolo. So those sneakers, by the way. Um, again. So you're using a toothbrush, eh? That's toothbrush land there. Yeah. Just as an aside, I'm dressed like a father in a stock photo. Like, if you're <laughs> no, watching a medical aid, Please. if you're watching a medical aid ad and there was a dad, he'd be dressed like this. It's the cool dad. It's the you know. It's the you know. It is. It's the weekend S stock photo today. But this is the dad who pitches up with those Converse. Is that is the I would imagine if I was a lady, that's the guy I want to be married to because he's pitching up and he's cool. Because you can the, take this look as yep. well to like you say, new medical aid, new private school mm. signing. My daughter's coming to look around. But this look, this look is is timeless. It's, it's timeless. Like, this look will never go out of fashion. Like, you, you're not doing too much. Also, you're not trying hard. You're not trying hard. You're, you're not trying hard. People also take you seriously, but they're like, okay, we can also chat to that guy. Yeah, he was... A, yeah. But, Paolo, where you've done well is not to be fat because this this outfit's tricky if you're a fat guy because yeah. those are those are well-fitted pants. And no. the open jacket is... If you get the stomach out, that yeah, becomes a story. It's all after no, you're no, resting no, no, no. iPad on this. No, 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 no. No, no. It's very easy to do it if you're fat. Mm. Just wear dark colors. Oh, is that is that the secret? Dark colors is going to... They're slimming. Are they? Mm. Do you not know that black is slimming? No, I've never been fat. You know, so, exactly. So, so <laughs> that's why I'm, I, I wear dark colors most of the time. Okay. Well, what's the story? Take me into it. Because I'm fat, remember? 
No. no, nobody's ever said that. But I mean, clearly you want to talk about it. Um, so what's the story? Are you feeling fat or what's the story? No, it was just a, it was just a casual callback to yesterday's show. What happened? Oh, the, the challenge I have set for me and my life coming forward. Which moving, is what? Moving forward. Um, being healthy. <laughs> now tell me, tell me here, Jimbo, what's the goal here? What are, what are we going to get up to? Is it a weight thing? Is it a, is it a wellness thing? What are you thinking here? Well, where's your head? What, talk to me about your headspace. Um, at the moment, it's a weight thing. Okay. Uh, that'll probably move into a wealth thing. So, uh, I mean, uh, wealth? <laughs> no, no. But, well, no, no. Because if you lose the weight, you'll become wealthy. Is what you're saying. Because you'll be able to work harder. Wealthy at heart. Must I tell you who's got the cool dad look to a T, but sometimes he goes very niche. Senzo doesn't care about your wellness. Yeah, though. no, he, not at all. He just wants to move on. We've he, moved on. Yeah, he's got it's other okay. stuff. We yeah, can he, move on. If you have a heart attack, he doesn't care. He's yeah, just no, like, no, no. I've got a point to make. I'm going to make it. We Go can ahead, move so. on. It's fine. No, I yeah. do. I, sorry, sorry about the death, impending death there, James. No, well, okay. we're all going to die. It's just a matter of how we go. He, he doesn't care, James. So um, if you die, don't expect Senzo to bring flowers. Yeah, so okay. I definitely will. Mm-hmm. Um, but... You know, it does the cool dad thing, I was saying. Very well. Yeah. Look at Pep Guardiola. Oh, Jesse Lingard can tell you that, yeah. I'm not well, no, into... Well, it's not Jesse Lingard, who is it? Uh, Deli Ali. Yeah. No, he, oh. does the, he does the cool dad. He does, but I'm not into the hoodies, though. No, it's the, the hoodie thing. The hoodie I thing. understand it's for charity, yeah. but like... No, but like you must see when... You know when he's wearing the, 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 the grey jersey mm. and the dog pants and like the white sneaker? No, no, he doesn't. Listen, Clean. I mean, Pep's a guy. I look, I go... <laughs> that's what I want to... That's, that's what Clean. I like. I like that. Why didn't he do a hairpiece? Nah. Nah, because nah. he's all time. He's, and, yeah, and also, he's got a funny shaped head because he's got like that. No, he's got the perfect shaped head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Deli Ali is the guy who went all Guardiola Jr., huh? He hooked up with his daughter. <laughs> That's uh... So maybe he did too much. Maybe Pep's doing too much. Maybe Deli was like, oh, yeah. look at that guy. He's cool. Oh, my goodness. Who's that with you? It's his daughter. And yeah. now I've gone full, allegedly, Wolf Zaha because I don't want to start getting into yeah, Wolf yeah. Zaha and Moyes Jr. because yeah. apparently he got in there. So. That's not a good situation. Hey, why do players do that? Or are, are, are boys just going to be boys? Yeah, boys will be boys. I mean, I think lads it's just will be a lads. power play. That's the ultimate power play. With the manager's daughter. Yeah, people don't care for their, their, their careers. But yeah. If, if you can have a Premier League footballer and not to be misogynistic, like, I mean, can have... Any the right. of the litter. 95% of women on, on the planet And there's are no challenge, right? There, there's Absolutely. not much of a challenge for them. Yes. Who's more off guard... Or off limit than a manager's daughter. The president. Uh, it's, it's so I think it's an ego thing. It's a challenge. It's like, watch this. Hold my beer. Hold my beer. But it lets you know where the headspace is. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine even like who's out there. Who's who's a pro's pro? Like Harry Kane's not doing that. Eh? He's not. He's not. Well, Harry he's not Kane going is... to Nuno Espirito Santo's daughter. We don't know. He's been. He's been acting after, uh, after his latest. <laughs> He's been, he's been whiling. But before we get, get back to sport, you, you, we did start speaking about cool dads. Is that, Paolo, before I come to Senzo, because he, he's got a, um, a theory, but I want to tell you what is not acceptable uh, to me at all, is that uh, I will never, ever accept uh, anybody above 40 who is my friend, um, and I'd like to think I consider you a friend. I will not accept you wearing Jordans, dropping your daughter off anywhere. If I see you, I will come to you. Now, I had said high tops, but it's it's that style of high top. So, uh, and, and the guys that say uh, all stars or, or that, that that kind of, um, I, I can st- sort of work with it if it's classic, but I'm not having high tops that are Jordans and you're 40 years old and you have to drop your daughter at a, at a, at a school. Paolo, I will confront you. I will confront you. Senzo's got his hands up. Yeah, looking like the little... That makes no sense. Go Jordan ahead. 1s are classics. They are, the, they are classics. Jordan 1 probably came out... 40-year-olds should be wearing Jordan 1s because the shoe they grew up on. Come on, now. I, 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 grew, ah, up, ah. I, I grew up eating sour worms. Like I, so, just because you grew up on something doesn't mean you have to keep doing it. Well, that's, you had your time. That's why the thing is, you see, that's why you're not a sugar. guy. You're not the, you're not the, you're not the style guy. No, so I'm going to interject here, right? Go ahead, Paolo. So I think if unless you're playing basketball over 40, yes. you should not be wearing high tops. 100%. Okay, especially those baller high tops. Yeah. To- we know which ones we're talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%. We know we're not talking like Jays. a casual sneaker. They call them right. Jays on the streets. However, Jays I do think Jordan Jays. ones go into that realm of all time. Mm. But now you got to go, what are you wearing with it? Okay. So I, I do think over 40, because that's the thing. I love Jordans. I wouldn't wear them because I go, it's just not the right look. Mm, mm. 
the Jordan 1s and then they got to be exclusive. So then you got to go, these shoes have got to be at least a month's worth of school fees. <laughs> right? And, and though? they've got to be like exclusive. Yeah. Not, you know, nobody can get these you with the tag hanging uh, over. Uh, it's yeah, got to be that level. I got you. And then what are you wearing with it? What are you coupling it with? Yeah. So, Sinisa Mihalovic, the, I think he was Bologna coach. Magnificent mm -hmm. yeah. left. One, one of the best left uh, feet you've ever seen in yeah. the history of football, by the way. Right. Some set piece specialist, doesn't get enough credit, played in a Bane mask, basically, uh, for, for a part of his career yeah. and a scrum cap. People think, um, uh, well, who's the guy at Wolves up front there? Jimenez. E Jimenez, the first guy to do it. And Christian Kivu. They are not. So, uh, well before, a guy called Sinisa Mihailovic. So he's a coach, or he was a coach at Bologna. Yeah. Um, and he kept those left feet yeah. in exclusive <laughs> Jordan ones. Got you. But we're talking like a thousand pair. Yeah. In a suit on the touchline. So now that I can go with because it goes, what else are you wearing with it? Got you. And those are untouchable shoes. Now, then, having said that, I have then, to jump in. Then we're talking. Sinisa Mihailovic, uh, if, you, if you are from this community or you have friends from this community, uh, I, we need to be very, I need to be very, very clear. He is Serbian. They don't play by our rules. No, Let, no, no. So let's not be at very all. clear. Not at all. It, it is important to take idiosyncrasies into account. Serbian people do not play by our rules. But I feel different about it because like, okay, you could wear Jordan ones with this outfit. Mm. Classics. Yes. You could wear it with this, with this outfit. What I don't like, and the, it's becoming a trend. It's becoming a trend among football coaches, especially like guys that we grew up on. Yeah. And now that are starting to go into coaching now. Yeah. This thing of wearing... I don't mind wearing sneakers with a suit. Yes. But they cannot be a tie. <laughs> you just look you look yeah. silly. With the, yeah, with that. Yeah. Tie Listen, off. The, the football guys, the footballers are ridiculous humans by nature. I'm saying, so I want you to be clear, and I will not move off this position. Mm. If I see Paolo or you in Jordans, I don't care if you paid the GDP of South Africa, I will stop the scholar patrol, get out of my Uber or car that I'm in, and go, this person is a dangerous society. So, Paolo, I'm just telling you. It's fine. And you will confront me and I go, listen, I do see your point. I am above it. But they are Jordan 1s, X, Y, Z. So, I, I respect your right to an opinion. But um, you're a single man outside of school. Yeah. Um, I'm alerting the authority. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing there? What are you doing there? No, fair enough. Fair enough. Here I was uh, thinking, I was thinking about Paolo's daughter and her <laughs> reputation. But Paolo says, get the hell out of my face. Senzo says, get the hell out of my face. They're classics. We're going to wear them. And what do I know? I'm I'm, I'm not a sneakerhead, but uh, I, I just I don't know where to go but with you that. Feel, one. I get what you mean because it's like you're I, dad now. I get you. I get you. And also, it's not about you. It's about your daughter. Now you're that guy. My girlfriend refuses. Do you know what she refuses with? Like there was this one T-shirt that had SpongeBob on it. Okay. My girlfriend was like, "No, you're not. You're not twelve. Because I like. You know what I like about your girlfriend's approach? There is yeah. you're representing Team Us now. <laughs> so so I like that you want to express yourself. Hey, you know where you wear that? When we're watching Netflix and chill. You, be yourself then. When we're going for lunch, you, you team us. I don't, want to, I don't need people knowing about Spongebob. Get it together. So I love that. Wunderbar I, on I, her part. I get it. I like no, that no, she's but, putting you... Because you know she's really doing that. She's giving you options. Yeah, but the thing is like, okay, I suppose this like... It's like for me when I see older guys. Yeah. Like guys part of, part of age and they don't have children. <laughs> yeah. And they're out there driving on Mini Cooper S and you can see this thing is is like is new and they don't have like a daughter or something. If you're older, like let's say if you're like 50, 60 yeah. and your daughter's like 18 or 21 or something and you're driving on Cooper S, maybe, you know, you're just using your daughter's car to fetch her. Yeah. But like you by yourself. You're... Th those are guys who've never had to, uh, uh, who've never, who don't like options and making choices because, so your girlfriend's being a grown up. Let me explain to you why. No, I get it. A person who communicates like that is giving you options. Are you in? Or are you out? Because what she's saying is Team Us doesn't roll like that. And you are welcome at any stage to tell me that you don't want to be part of Team Us. So shout out to her. I, I, I really, really do but like that. But that's how I equate your, the, your Jordan thing. Yes. I equate it to that. So now I can see where you're coming from. I just don't necessarily agree with you. No, but... fair enough. And, and that's, uh, you, you know, well, but I want to be vehemently clear. And James, I need this to be clear for you as well moving forward. You know, even if you do go on to produce and uh, sort of edit for like Hollywood films is that if I see you like thinking, oh, I'm cool. I'm now with Ray J or whoever, Ray right? J. I don't know who celebrities hang out with. And there you are thinking, oh yeah, a hey, shout out to y'all. And now I'm, I don't know, I'm editing. By, by, by the time James is 50, they'll, it'll probably be Avatar 16, right? By then 
Um, no, it'll probably still be Avatar 2. Avatar two, three, two, yeah. Because three, that movie's yeah. never coming out. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that, that, that is very true. But James, I will not have you wearing Jordans in, in public thinking you're cool doing gang signs. It's not going to happen. It's not... like it is, and I, I'll make a thing about it. I, I'll make a stink. I will make a stink. I'm just letting people know that. So, Paolo, do not wear Jordans because... Or you're not. Wear Jordans. Just do not drop your Jordans. Do not see you. And do, don't let me... No, le- no. Don't let me be on, on my way to a meeting. I'm stopping the street. I've just seen Challenge James, accepted, actually. I've just seen I'll, James an image of Mahalovic in, in the Jordan look that I'm talking about. Yes. I don't know if he can use it. Maybe we'll see it later in the show. Yeah. And then we reserve judgment. No, fair enough. Challenge accepted. I'm going to do it and you're going to think it's cool. All right. We'll see. Uh, and you, you know what I think? I think you, you, you think I'm not going to stop the whole of Scholar Patrol and make yeah, you an example of. But the thing is, it's, you haven't tasted it yet. I, I urge you to do this and you'll learn a very harsh lesson. It's, a, it's the SpongeBob, the SpongeBob <laughs> shirt thing. I'll rock it and you, you'll think it's you cool. You want to go for it, see how it goes. Oh, I think it's cool. All right, we'll see how it goes. Actually, do not all do, actually. We'll be at like, maybe my son is at some school event. Yeah. Or he'll be watching somewhere. And then I'll call you to come meet me there. And we'll be on a Saturday. Immediate situation. I, no, no, I'm making that an immediate situation. I hope it's like, you, you know, it's St. John's on those stands that they have. <laughs> That's exactly what you know, I'm where it's all the yuppie parents and they all, like, all the partners do this. They, they speak like... Oh, so many K-Way jackets. Oh, a lot of K-Way jackets. And you're going to be that guy dressed in K... I can picture on Buddha and Buddha going to wear All-Stars. Like, 501 Levi's. Yeah. Uh, white t-shirt. Yeah. K-Way jacket. Now, uh, having said that, that is one place where I don't play around. I, you, I wouldn't be caught dead in K-Way because uh, I, I have been in the Alpine world. I wouldn't be caught dead in generic uh, Alpine gear. Okay. Burton or death, my friend. Burton is the top of the right. tree. Me and Sean White. That's what we're rocking. I've had the same bomber jackets uh, uh, for 15 years. Burton does not rust. K-Way, get that the hell out of you. But I will pitch up at St. John's and I will make a situation of it. All right. Um, th- there, is a, a <laughs> there is a comment here by a guy called Pimo. He says, um, taking advice from a guy who wears purple high tops. Uh, hashtag, <laughs> hashtag your days and numbers closer to 40 than 30. Um, Bolelo. Now, I do have uh, a pair of limited edition. I believe there were 250 of them made uh, globally. Uh, they are Chuck Taylors and um, they are a limited edition and I will wear them. But again, I'm not a dad of a daughter at a private school. That's my problem. So shout out to that. That is, uh, am I a hypocrite? Possibly. Possibly. Uh, I mean, I'm possibly a hypocrite and Pimo is calling me out there. I'm, All right. into, I'm into Pimo. Pimo is new. I haven't seen that name before. Mm, you yeah. like that? Mm. I like Pimo. Pimo has got your number and I'm here all day for it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's stern but fair. Yeah. Stern I think, but fair. And, I think uh, Pimo passes along comment yeah. that is character building. I feel it's not just <laughs> criticizing. Yes. I feel it's contemplative. Like you'll read something from Pimo and go, yes. Yeah. You're right. It'll sting, but you'll actually like crying in the shower tonight you'll go Pimo was right yeah that's if it if only I could be more like Pimo that's mm. true that's the hashtag should be the hashtag for today be, yeah. more like, be like Pimo um, ha- hashtag album coming soon we have changes to that if you haven't heard I will be putting a pig in, ex- in uh, exclusive uh, what's it Jimmy Choo that's where you want to be hey? you want to do Jimmy Choo mm. is it Jimmy Choo Mm. Are, are those the high tops I've always, uh, no 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 Jimmy Choo uh... no not high tops the, the heels that lady, ladies wear yeah, Jimmy Choo's, the Christian Louboutins, the uh, Manolo Blahniks, the... Uh, How do you know so much about... Mm, about guess it, guess it whose girlfriend's put in her Christmas wish list. No, 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 no. My, my <laughs> girlfriend's not like Jimmy Choo or like... Okay, well, that makes me wonder even more. How do you know so much about uh, ladies' shoes? <sighs> you forget who, you, who you're talking to. Talk to me. Talk to me. Are, is on, it a bro. thing? Are you going... Do you, are you wearing them Friday night? No, bro. Like, come on. Everybody knows uh, they'll bought... They'll, Pierre Balmain's, they're like, bro, I can go on. I can rattle off. Lady shoes, huh? Lady shoes, guys' shoes, like... F- no, no, talk to me about the lady shoes. Tour high end, what, okay. So as, so what you want to do is probably Manolo Blahniks. Okay. Because if you are, if, if you want to be... You look like the type to wear Manolo Blahniks. You, if you're an old white woman or an old rich black woman, <laughs> do not you'd wear, you'd wear Manolo Blahniks. You think so? No, because Christian Louboutins, you're going to be like, oh, those are what the young girls are. So Manolo Blahniks are like what the first lady of a country is wearing. What does Oprah wear? Because I'm pretty probably sure Manolo Blahniks or Manolo. Jimmy Choo's. Yeah, yeah, and then she wears she, the second grade stuff. She gives to uh, what's her Bessie. No, no, she wouldn't let Gail be caught dead in Christian Louboutins. So does that represent come correct? Yeah, come correct. Dog. See, that's what I'm doing for you guys. I would be the Oprah because Gail, she put 
Gail on, and Gail is now moving with her own show at a high level. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? So th- there's all sorts of that that stuff going on. Oprah Winfrey. All right, on screen, Bologna manager uh, Sinisa Mihailovic in Jordans during yesterday's match. But that match works though. Versus Napoli. Shout out BR Football. And those are limited. Those are those are the North Carolinas. Those are the North Carolinas. You see, that's what and I'm off, saying. And off white. So yeah, yeah, I know those those <laughs> that, that that pair of sneakers costs quite and, a bit. And you know what he did in that game? And I, I think it, a lot of people almost had a conniption. He actually the ball came out and he kicked the ball yeah. with those in those yeah. in those. <laughs> those. Those are limited edition. I yeah. think it was Michael Jordan's debut for North Carolina. He wore those, and yeah. that's the re-release. And Mihalovic on that left foot. You see, there's a little tag there. Yeah. He kicked the ball with that. So, and I think every sneakerhead in the whole world... Doing well, like, I was also like, yeah, no, because cause already... Okay, let me, let me teach you guys something. You see that colorway? Mm-hmm. That North Carolina colorway? Yeah. That on its own is near impossible to find. Yeah. And then you add that... Uh, and then you add Off-White to that, the Off-Lab Nike collaboration. Good luck finding those sneakers. Okay, I mean, let's hold that on screen because just here's my thing. Maybe I'm too conservative. That is not the manager I want at my football club. Like, that's, but the, t- that's the guy I want as a record producer. Tell Mihalovic to dress differently. But How do you think that's going to end for no, you? No, he's going to kick you with his And he's foot. in remission yeah. from cancer. Is, is, so, he, right? I think, he, I think he's in remission yeah. from cancer. Yeah. So do you, know much, do you know how much that, um, that exact pair of shoes he's wearing, do you know how much that costs in rands? How much? 35,000 rand. And Mihalovic booted a ball with, with, the, with those. Probably better than Jesse Lingard. <laughs> They are 35,000 rand. Yeah, Paolo, you can see. Well, 35 rand conceptually because you can't buy those. Yeah, you can't. So, can't so that's what, $4,000 or whatever it is. Or it's about ma- two, two and a bit. I'll tell Mihalovic. You tell Mihalovic. To dress. I think he looks fantastic. Yeah, he's no, he it. does look fantastic. That's what I'm but saying. I don't want him managing my football club then. Because you, you look like a clown as a manager. So do you rather, from someone who's manager, yes. basically must have got as part of his contract... Uh, a coupon to go shop at the Chelsea club store because all Tuchel ever wears is yes. club tracksuits. No, but him and yeah, this guy, this guy's doing it more than Klopp because Klopp now. Nah, but no. uh, but I guess there's different levels, right? Is Klopp you- and Tuchel are those are tight thirst, and Klopp's a thirst trap. Yeah, I'm surprised Klopp is still wearing club tracksuits. Mm-hmm. Tuchel, there's no hope for him. Do you know what also does it eh, when it comes to the to the to the to the fashion thing? Like who does it and, and not even trying? The the Milan coach. That guy's impeccable. In, in Zaghi? N- uh, not in Zaghi. Pioli. Uh, pu- okay. So, no, but doing it, doing it as a manager and uncatchable, Scott Parker. No, nah, Scott Parker, but he's, Scott Parker does, Scott Parker does like in the, sh- like it's hard to fail in Scott Parker's like. I think Scott Parker's too self-aware. I think he realizes now people look at him and I think he's trying too hard. Yeah, no, he's, he's do you know what I'm saying? It's too hard. If you put Mahalovic in, in that, in the, in the way Scott Parker dresses, he's killing Mahalovic. Mihalovic is saying, look, guys, I'm serious, but, you know, I'm about it as well. Mihalovic is also trying. I like Arteta. I like what Arteta's doing. I think that's one thing Arteta's doing. No, no, no. He's uh, He's not trying hard. That's just him. Does he dye his hair? He has to. Because that hair is unbelievable. You know, you get that black. Yes. That is blacker than black. Yes, 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 yes. He's using that as his, that's his hair dye color. Because that can't just be, he's from Sociedad, hey? You can go like this for days. You'll never see skull. No, he's ever. He dyes his hair. He must. Arteta does not have skull. His <laughs> his roots for his hair must go like into his neck. <laughs> like you would shave that guy with a one, and just yeah. hair would you just get hair? Just, just more. keep getting hair. And it's perfect. It looks like he's never had a haircut. It's just that's how it grows. There's a comment from Henry. Um, Henry says, "H hey, Senzo um, has wa- uh, uh, Senzo has watched too much Sex in the City." Now, it's Senzo, I would, uh, what Henry doesn't know is you wouldn't be ashamed to tell us. You watch everything. Oh, home box office. Come on, man. <laughs> can tell you um Kerry Bradshaw yeah Samantha Jones yes um what's 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 your I don't know what Charlotte's surname is yeah and then there's Miranda Sex in the City did you really do watch everything bro if you don't know so you're into it huh? you like, like if it's on you'll watch it no it depends what it is because like no uh, it doesn't with you I've never watched Game of Thrones that doesn't make sense but you're watching me, Sex in the City me neither I have been through six weeks off work at home in bed with a broken leg and a worldwide lockdown, and I did not watch Game of Thrones. Okay, but Game of Thrones, interesting situation, because l- let's be honest about it, is it's, it, it was too big out of the gate where you didn't have to pick sides immediately. It's like, 
either you have to hate it or you have to love it immediately and it's the worst thing or the best thing ever. You can't just say, oh, it's it's probably the best written TV show I've ever seen. People go, oh, it's the violence. All so, I know, all I know. What was it for you, Paolo? Was it too late? Too many series? You don't like yeah, violence? You don't I, like I magic? Just, yeah, I just felt I was too... F- I, it was... I'd missed it. And I feel like I'll watch Game of Thrones in 10 years' time. You, you won't. Know, I've got to be... No, then I won't. So I had to because then they'll reboot it and yeah. it'll be... It'll be stupid. Yeah. <laughs> hey, why are they doing that? Senzo, you, you, you're the content guy. Why are they not making new stuff? Why are they making like Lord of the Rings, although terrible, by the way, Lord of the Rings is the most overrated thing that's ever happened that, on this planet. Um, and I was forced uh, due to me being a guy and uh, that trying I can, to see if I can get that a I, to hang around. That I can, I can agree with I watched with all you. three at the cinema I fell asleep in the second one. So bad. All of them are terrible. I fell asleep in the second one. I was just like, whoa, this is one. Okay, but long. now they're, they're making the the one guy story, from what I understand. Right? Ooh, Legolas. Legolas the, the Hobbit, a... right? Yeah. Is that an offshoot of... It's the same guy who wrote it, though. But what, what are we doing? Uh, Can we not just make... You know what? Like, what let's we make do? another Fast and Furious. But have you... <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> this Fast and Furious is ridiculous. Ridiculous, man. They like go to space or something like that. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, maybe on the other side it'll be film talk, maybe it'll be sports talk. They are going to space. <laughs> this, is, this is a whole new world. Um, by the way, if you're joining us for the very first time on this channel and you're wondering, what have I stepped into here? Uh, I thought it was a sports show. I want to hear about sport. This is what's going to happen. You know, uh, some people are having an existential crisis. James is transitioning right now. I'm not sure what happened earlier. Uh, James tried to have a real moment with us. Senza said, I don't care. I want to talk about high tops or, or whatever it was. So he doesn't care about James. But that's the stuff that happens. That's real life. You know, you got your own stuff going on. Senza will come off the top rope, elbow drop. I don't care about your health or wellness. That's not my problem. I want to tell people about uh, Manolo Blancs or whatever they called. And the lady from Sex in the City who's friends with Kyrie Irving. Um, he was on a Zoom call with her instead of pitching up for work that one time. Incredible. Uh, getting paid $40 million a year. It said, nah, not coming to work. Uh, there's uh, Carrie or whatever her name is. She, she's got she's having problems with Mr. Big on Sex in the City. I'm doing that instead. Shout out to uh, Kyrie Irving for being the big man. Ladies and gentlemen, the MKT show. Plenty coming up on the other side. Thank you.
It's high time the high tops took a hike because you're old now. You're old now. Stop with the high tops. Up until 40 high tops. After that, let's let's not because it's not just about you after 40, right? So um, I can't say that enough and I, I will repeat a lot of people will say I'm gilding the lily. Uh, don't ever give me a plant as a present. It is an imposition. Uh, Paula, people do this all the time. You're a grown up. You're a grown-up, right? Well, in, in, in years anyway. So I, I, I don't want to start getting into the long grass because if I interviewed your wife, honestly, she might say different, right? Is She might go, that guy in his shoes or whatever, you know? But your look, your job that you do tells me you're a little bit of a grown-up. Why do people give people a plant as a gift? Yeah, I mean, I've done it myself. Oh, but I don't know why. I suppose... Worst. It is because it's like I'm giving you something to do. I mean, it's like giving a person a puzzle. I'm giving you something to do with it. Yeah, for me, is anything I have to keep alive is not a gift. It's just what... it, it is not a gift. Give me a baby. While but, you're but, sure. <laughs> but, opposed, but opposed to giving a person flowers, and I suppose that's what the, the difference is. Like, I don't know why anyone would give you flowers. Mm. But if you give a person flowers, it's going to die within a week. If you give a plant, at least it lasts longer. Which is worse. So, and you're seeing how responsible they are. No, I'm saying that's worse. Don't get, don't, do not give me that. So, what once happened was my sister was leaving the country and we used to live together in Cape Town. And she, I was like, okay, listen, give this plant away, you know, in the weeks leading up to it. She didn't. On the way out uh, to help them, uh, like, accompany them to the airport, well, we might as well grab this. I'm throwing it in the dustbin. I don't not, I don't need that kind of responsibility. A plant is an imposition, not a gift. Anything that can die is not a gift. It, uh, unless it's a baby, of course. I mean, that's a whole different thing. Human beings very nice to have around, especially if you make them and they start to look like you and annoy you from around age six because they're a little bit like you, Paolo. Correct. Yeah. How do you feel about a Tamagotchi? Tamagotchis were quite cool back in the day. You could die as well. Um, do you know what I heard the I've other never day? ever had one though. That there's a, that somewhere in the UK, they've got a Tamagotchi graveyard where you, <laughs> when your Tamagotchi died, you could send it to them when they bury your Tamagotchi. Jesus. Also, how much does that cost? So what, you'd have to fly, you, you'd send you'd it in send with a FedEx package. It, that's to say, like, I'd like to bury my Tamagotchi. They send you a little package, you put it in, nice Hold words, on. whatever. So do they have it? My, my next question is, do they have it, like, in a crematorium, mausoleum, yeah, yeah. cemetery? What like, are we doing? I, I suppose you can choose. Wow, that, <laughs> imagine. Send back the ashes. Commemorations. Send back the parts and then yeah. you can scatter those parts. <laughs> no. What I'd like is a digital I'd like the ashes, but digital. An NFT of the ashes. I, I don't want I don't want physical stuff. Yeah, My right. Tamagotchi lived in the zero one zero 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 world. I'd like the ashes in zero ones and zero ones. You know what I'm saying? That's really doing it properly. Did you have a Tamagotchi? Senzo, you see you, you seem like the type. You seem like the type. You're into everything. No. My cousin had one though. Of course he did. What did you do? Like, oh, 
Hey, no, no, no. Let me keep no, it for the weekend. The one time, no, the one time, like, I don't know, you, you went to go play like a cricket match or something. Yeah. And he asked me to, to feed it and play with it. Yeah. And then I forgot and it kind of died. And he was so angry with me. So, Paolo, what do kids have in this day and age? Like, back in our day, Tamagotchi, whatever, what do they do now? Do, do they still have those things? Like, Well, a lot of games that kids play are very similar to that. So, a lot of it is about keeping things alive and keeping civilizations and people going wow i can't think of an actual tamagotchi kids are big into poppet fidget puppets oh, now. Puppets, what yeah. are you yeah. talking about no. so so it's like did you ever see fidget spinners yes I right. have, uh, yes so this is the new thing to keep kids hands busy it's sort of like bubble wrap it's like an ice tray it's those like an r- ice plastic ice tray but it's got little rubber bubbles that you pop just okay. to keep your hands busy does it pop forever or do i have to buy it, a new? no it pops forever so it's like but if Bubble wrap never stopped popping. Bing. Yeah. But it doesn't make the cool sound, but it, it's like that. And it comes in different shapes mm. and like it's a unicorn or it's a circle or it's a Among Us character. How, how do you how do you brainstorm that as an idea that kids will like? Do crack. You... <laughs> you take crack. <laughs> you take crack, you come up with the first idea, then you go do whatever you do while you're high on crack and then you come back and you get a check. And you're like, this would be so cool. So we're like, yeah. Crack. That's what it is. Because parenting must be so hard right now. Because back in my day, as much as um, I'm from this generation, you know, is that there were only so many things. There, there were only video games. There were only video game. There were only movies. But now, like... Satanism? Pol- Satanism was big when you were young. James, yeah. you're it's, it's from... It's gone away now. James, like, there was you're from Satanism. the West Rand. Um, Satanism, something... That kept which, us busy. I will come back to Paolo <laughs> going... <laughs> yeah, that, yeah okay yeah because satan kept paulo busy and um being portuguese i'd imagine he's catholic and it was always a big fight with whoever maybe now james you come from the west Rand. you guys have relaunched uh, the brand of satan just your thoughts on your people and everything they've done uh for the for the dark lord <laughs> um so i was actually wondering how you were going to segue from someone mentioning satan to me mm-hmm. um uh, I was gonna say something. Um, what do you think of Satan? Yeah, no, not a vibe. I'm not a. I'm not a major fan. I don't want his autograph anytime soon. <laughs> Just talk me through his thinking. Is okay. I'm in heaven. Whatever. There's marshmallows. There's hot chocolate. Nah, I'm not into this. Uh, let me go see what else is going on out there. Um, because you you quite a conservative bloke, James. You, you you kind of like peace and and people to be happy. So I'd imagine you in the worlds that have been created, you probably want to be in heaven. I'd imagine. I mean, uh, that's the that's the overall goal one day, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> well, no, like, it's not for me to say. I, I don't know where you want to go. Well, I mean, like in, in a lot of different sort of areas or circles or whatever you want to call them, heaven and hell has different uh connotations or meanings yeah L- listen they, they say you want to go to hell for the weather and hell for the company um i'm not, not sure if you've heard that very famous philosopher said that but anyway um james tell me this though is for you now i'm saying uh al diablo he was what 13 year old probably bullied at boarding school mm. uh by whatever another yeah. angel who i don't know was better at cricket or whatever i don't know what they were up to up there um, so around 13 he probably thought oh my dad is a nightmare he's the ceo of the whole world is the pressure's too much so what are you thinking as the devil pretty early on? Are you going, the first chance I get, I'm getting out of here. It's kind of like probably growing up with your dad being an accountant and your mom being like a lecturer. The first chance you get, you, you are off to uh, Vietnam to go yo- to do a yoga course kind of thing. Huh? You know what I think was going through his mind? I think he had like a little... Could be a her, could be a her, so just to be clear. Do you know what I think was going through their mind? Yes. Um, was that they had a little bit of like middle child syndrome. No. Because, wait, no, no, no. Hold on. What are you saying? Who, who's the older brother? Because there's Jesus, a huge hit. When did, is Jesus before or after the devil? Last born boy. Okay, so Jesus gets all of the attention. Was Last there anyone born. before? Who, who's the... Paolo... Um, the devil wasn't a son. The well, devil was an angel. An angel. Satan was an angel. Mm. Yeah. So not God's son. No, mm. he was just an angel. Lucifer. He was just the guy that was... Oh, was he just uh, was an, an employee, yeah. like a cousin? No, but I meant employee. it like, you know how... We're part of the entourage. You, you you know how we're all God's children, so all of the angels. No, right? no, sure, but but I, but I mean biologically, I it's he, tough it's tough though for the Holy Trinity to actually get the DNA locked in there. But okay, that's a different subject. Do you know what it's like? I'll 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 give you this analogy. It's like you know being part of a band, right? 
Got you. So let's say you're part of like NSYNC, going back to boy band. <laughs> you're part of like As it NSYNC. always does. Yeah. God is like Justin Timberlake. Got you. And then the devil's like JC Shazay. It's like, actually, I can do this on my own as well. Oh, uh, I see. But actually, although th- that's tough because JC Shazay never got a whole religion in, in South Africa. Who would have thought that in, tw- uh, what, what's it, 2021 years later, a, a show that is bigger than Game of Thrones in its first week of viewing on Showmax is that that's launched by your people james that's i I thought maybe you'd have a bit more for me on the devil but how do you feel that your people are representing you by loving the devil and uh bringing it to the to the light of the world to say that is what the west rand is okay first of all they're not my people you're from the west rand sorry you don't get to claim them and not claim them you you're from the west rand no wait am i from the west rand though because and hear me out sure i was born oh my god in the north lived in ramburg yeah and then spent most of my life in the West Rand. Okay, so you, you took a really long time to tell me you're from the West Rand. I already knew that. So uh, just your thoughts on how you're being represented as devil lovers. Um, not great. Not great. And uh, there's, there's obviously people that um, just assume that because it's in one sort of concentrated area that a lot of people from that area are also part of the same group. Um, so not great. But, you know, I've... I've moved on yeah. from the West Strand. You, you, know? you know what I'm hoping is that I, I really hope we don't go from this to you guys supporting Pontius Pilate after this, you know, because th- that's that's the slippery slope. You go from the devil to Pontius Pilate who who did the, the dirty work. He, literally, the devil's work was done by Pontius Pilate. So Judas, boy. I just, you know, oh, Judas, oh, Judas Iscariot Judas and Pontius is not Pilate, not great guys. Judas no. So who's the biggest sellout, Pontius or, or Judas, Judas Iscariot? Judas. Judas, Judas was there in the trenches with his boy and he said... Let me face Judas, this guy for Judas you. sold his homie out for some sold gold. Sold him for bro. thirty pieces, just for, for thirty bucks. Well, you guys just are for getting, thirty rand, bro. For thirty yeah. bucks, it's just because he guys, wanted a hot dog. Like compared to today, to today. Yeah, yeah, it's thirty pieces of silver. Yeah, I mean, 30, you put, put it yeah, today. That's not thirty bucks. Yeah, it's probably what uh, three, four million. No, but I'm just saying. <laughs> no, but maybe you know, he, he, if I'm if I'm Judas Iscariot in that situation, but is, thirty bucks was a lot back then. So. No, it was thirty pieces of silver. I mean, it could be three million now. <laughs> Is I'm tired it of my kids. It was 51 rand coins. Yeah, but <laughs> the way Senzo keeps calling it 30 bucks. Like. Yeah, the 30 bones in, in Jerusalem saying, uh, hey, Avi, uh, do you have 30 bucks for me? <laughs> Listen, Pontius, my boy, Um, look, you know, the bill yeah. that, the, the, that the last supper was ish, boy. Okay, but I, I think I want to finish this off. Is I'm not giving Pontius Pilate a break. Is that uh, Judas Iscariot catches a hell of a lot, a, a lot of the stuff. Nobody's he's, ever, he's just as bad. Well, nobody's ever asked Judy uh, uh, Ascariot what was going on. Was he in bad debt? You know, did he make? Did he have? Maybe he had a gambling problem. Did maybe he lose double, it all on Bitcoin? This is what I'm saying. <laughs> did he lose his Bitcoin password? Did, did he get caught up in a um, triangle uh, pyramid scheme, a Ponzi scheme? We don't know what the thirty pieces of silver was going to, and I, I'm not having him take all the heat. Pontius Pilate needs to answer to this day and age right up until now. What I hope is that people in the West Rand don't start a church of Pontius Pilate. But he delivered the boy on it. Silver platter to Pontius. He said, "Hey, what you do with him? I don't care. You said you want your boy. He's your boy. Can, Give can me I money, just, I'm out." Can I just say, yes, that us people on the West Strand aren't the first people in South Africa to have done this. Yeah, but you did it the best. <laughs> that may be true. So during the hard, the first initial hard lockdown, right in South Africa, <laughs> yes, they actually—I don't know if it was before, uh, like just before or during. They actually launched the first um, satanic church in in South Africa. Yeah, and there was they had a past. I don't know if they called them a pastor. I could be wrong. They so, had like a pastor, and they launched like their own TikTok channel, and they had all these social media things going on. Also, so they actually launched a satanic church before so, the people in the West. Well, actually, the people in the West Rand. Who's they? No, well, that, that's what I'm going to say, right? So there is a church, a uh, Church of Satan, Satan. Yeah. right? And they've got a website and James Wright. They've got all those things. But I'd like to know how many people they is because all I've ever seen is the main guy. And I've, the chick. I've, that's it. Yeah, it's, I, it's I think it's guy. just a balmy couple there. who are good at SEO and keywords on Google. <laughs> 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 I, don't think that, I don't think that's a church. <laughs> but, like, how did we get here? Where, uh, okay, traditional church, whatever. I, I don't care how, what you care okay. about religion. How are we at a stage where people are at a church of Satan? Like, like, why does why does the Bible have a spin-off and we're into it? Because, dog, you must understand, we live in a very PC world now. You know what I yeah. mean? We live in a very PC world. They say you can do whatever you want. 
as long as you're not harming or imposing on other people. Yeah, I hear so you. So some people, they're, they're very much into that, you know. So it, it, it's not holds bar now. Pandora's box is it's open. open. And if you go to the West Rand, bring the devil, bring Pontius Pilate, I we mean, are on board. I said this the other day on the show. Donald Trump can't tweet, but the Taliban, hey, they're out here. What are those guys up to at the moment? Because They were in paddle boats. Did you see this weekend? <laughs> Paolo, Paolo came into that very quickly. Like he was no. super excited to bring that it, up. It, it amused me. No, if, if you, James, I'm telling you now, if you Google like Taliban news, the first thing you're going to find is the <laughs> Taliban. Like it looks like they're having a hell of a time on their little paddle boats in very nice blue water. They, they were also joyriding um, the, the US Army helicopters a couple of weeks ago. What? <laughs> yeah, no, they, so yeah. shortly after they had left, there were videos... Oh, the U.S. Army had left. There were videos of them like getting into these U.S. Army um, uh, helicopters, and they were just flying them up and down in the desert, just joyriding them. Hey, shout out to them for having qualified. Um, listen, a helicopters is almost an impossible thing to fly. Mm. So shout out to them for having multiple. So how many would you say? Like ten? No, quite a bit because yeah. you know, because the U.S. Army they were giving um, e- arms and equipment to the to the. The I've got a, this is a Taliban right now. It's me paddling. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, sorry, Senzo, but it is important <laughs> to know that this is what the Taliban like. What do you think they're up to? It, it's like, hey, terrorism in the morning, but let's stay in shape, guys. Probably hitting a hookah now, you know, yeah. pedal. But hey, we won't have any fatties. No fatties on the squad. You know what I'm saying? If we're gonna do terrorism, six packs straight away. Yeah, guys, because the most important thing, obviously, after terrorism. The health of your heart, guys. Let's get in a paddle boat. Let's keep uh, let's keep this thing going forward. Exactly. You know, that's what they're up to. Exactly. What a crazy world! Like, like what a health conscious terrorist. Well, they want to live forever. Oh, that's true. true. That's also true. If I was a terrorist, they got it pretty good. No one's really telling you no ever. They want wow. to live forever. Who would have thought Pontius Pilate and the and the Taliban? How many sports shows are talking about Pontius Pilate and the Taliban? And whether we should blame the devil for being bullied in boarding school. None again. of the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> and, to t- and to tell you again, oh, what do I say? Man, we just built different. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we built different. L- listen, having said that, let's go to a place. Some people may say, uh, did it come out the West End? We don't know. But maybe the devil built it. Uh, social media, uh, Senzo Sistebe, what do you have for me, Pop? Now, I just saw a very interesting tweet. Yes. Um, yesterday. They were telling, after David the hair save, and he was like, you know, like he just won the World Cup. Yeah. Um, the the top keepers chart for the guys who've saved the most penalties. Ever. And it's, yeah, it's not and it's not that much. Like if you think about the games, the number of games these guys played. Yeah. So um, shout out to the Premier League, uh, possibly the worst Twitter account on the internet. The official yeah. Premier League uh, Twitter account, absolutely dreadful. I don't know who the admin is there. They need to get somebody with a little bit of a sense of humor. Uh, James Ilsley, who you do know from the show, once told me the very first time I met him. He said um, one of his traits is that he's funny. I, I'm yet to see that still, but maybe he could go there and start practicing that. But uh, the official Premier League uh, Twitter says David De Gea has now saved three penalties in the Premier League. Three in his whole career. Yeah, and I know who they're off. The funny thing is when I saw that tweet, I knew exactly which guys he had stopped, whose penalties he had stopped. What on it was, earth? It was Robin Van Persie. Yeah. Uh, in the A2 game. Then it was Leighton Baines. Okay. Against Everton. Same, same end at Old Trafford. And then now it was... That is embarrassing. No, well, it's a, this is a bit of a cheeky stat, though, because they're just using David De Gea as clickbait. Because, firstly, how many penalties have United conceded? I mean, oh, let's no, be honest. Uh, because what, what was the... How it went? But obviously, in those years, none. Right, so this yeah. is Premier League. You don't have penalty shootouts in the Premier League. So, how many... So firstly, how many have we actually conceded? Yeah, because mm-hmm. of Howard Webb for a decade. No way. He's nothing. not good at penalties. And then if you're showing the top five who've upwards 13-10, why the hell would you even put David De Gea in there? So this is just a yeah. child that has gone, what's going to get me the clicks, David yeah. De Gea? Because but also, it's not, those numbers aren't impressive if you think about how many games each of those keeper has played. Although what it tells you is we make too much of penalties. Paolo, you've, you've, you, that's a great point that I think you've made there, is that there aren't that many penalties. Because David James played, I believe, mm. the most games in a row. Out, and then Frank Lampard took over in the history of the Premier League, right? Yeah. Is that 13 in his whole career. What that tells you is there aren't actually that many penalties that happen. We no, make a bigger fuss of it when it does happen. We, we, we really do. That's and the drama. A penalty is a free hit. It's a silly stat because a penalty for a keeper, like, great if you can save it, but you're really not expected to. And you're guessing. 
Yeah, the only person that knows where they're going is the guy that's going kick the kicking the penalty. Not a, like I said, uh, the the Premier League's Twitter page, honestly, is one of the worst I've ever seen. I, I don't just mean for sports. It's who is running it? Is it a bot? Is it Pontius Pilate? Like it's so bad. It's so bad. They need to improve that immediately. Fire the person and get James. Uh, Paulo, I ever told you James first time I met him. What, what's your main trait? I'm funny. What? First time I met him. It's a lot. Funny looking, maybe. I should have said yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. Uh, dad jokes. Yeah. Dad yeah. jokes. Yeah. All right. What, what else we got there, uh, Senzo? The other thing that I have, I don't know how you feel about this because I thought about you when you this. Uh, the England uh, women's manager, mm-hmm. Serena Wingham. Mm-hmm. Williams? No, no. Serena Wing- Wingham. Yeah, or, or Wigman. Mm-hmm. Has reiterated her stance against holding World Cups every two years. Yes. Insisting players are not robots and they need their welfare protecting. Um, I tell you what, it is the the World Cup, as far as I'm concerned, already international football is the biggest joke in the world anyway. So I'm totally on her side. But you know what you don't want to lose with something like a World Cup is that the the fact that and I heard Arsene Wenger's reasoning for this was that an injury can mean a player can miss a World Cup. But not every story should be a fairy tale because nothing's a fairy tale then. Sure. Is the the story of somebody missing a World Cup, um, the stories that come from injuries at a World Cup and someone's career gets made is these are all part of the fabric of this of this fairy tale. Because football is a fairy tale the sure. way the way it is now. Is let's not take that away because football has already been so commercialized. Mm. We're already as the common man out, right? Is that for me, I'm absolutely absolutely on board unless now this is the important part if fifa say whatever a player gets to their club we will match At the then I, we can have a world cup every year if fifa are willing to pay somebody four hundred thousand pounds a week and some of the female footballers whatever they earn then i would be open to the conversation because the thing is i was thinking about this and i was like imagine you're a guy like hendrik mctorin mm-hmm. you know armenia are definitely not going to make it the world cup yeah so like you must be like no forget about the world cup like I do it because, you know, yeah, it'll be cool. But, like, I know I'm never going to play at the World Cup. I'll, t- I'll take the, the opposite stance of this. Is she referring to Men's World Cup or Women's? Because there's a lot of, they're also proposing Women's yeah, World yeah, Cup both. every two years. Yeah. Okay. I think a Women's World Cup should happen every two years for now. Good to, point. to establish the sport. Yeah. So, I think, um, I don't know which one she's talking about. But I do think women's football needs the development, needs the money, yeah. needs the exposure, needs to get around to different mm-hmm. countries. Um, we need to accept that there's going to be a World Cup every two years. FIFA are going to do it. Yep. And they got the power because the smaller nations, the Armenians, are going to vote for it because are you more likely to qualify for a World Cup that's held every two years or every four yes, years? Yeah. So I think the smaller com- countries are going to go, you know what, a two-year World Cup, a two-year cycle, we probably have a better chance. And that's yeah. why they're going to vote for it. Uh, so I'd take the point of view of a Victorian going, Jeez, I got it every two year crack at it, opposed to question you. from my side. A- actually, uh, James, before we come to you, well, what we need to be very clear about is Henrik Mkhitaryan will not have a say. The greedy politicians that run the FAs make these decisions. I don't care how powerful Mkhitaryan thinks. No, it no, is. no, no. So, so I mean, we're talking from a player perspective, Effective. and we're talking from the FA perspective. So, uh, the Armenian FA. Because you choose well, to play for your country, you know what I mean. You can turn, you can turn down like call ups and be like, you know, you guys. Well, you can't actually. Uh, Claude Makélélé tried to do that with a guy called Didier Deschamps. Not sure if you remember that. Uh, he uh, he got FIFA to, FIFA to force him to come back. Uh, it was when he was at Chelsea, and so the rule was very very interesting. If you do that and your country calls you up, you I, you can no longer retire from international football. Claude Makélélé tried this, and <laughs> hey, Jose Mourinho said this, not me. Is players are being treated like slaves because what they said was if Makélélé retires from international and they want you, you have to retire from football. You may not play oh, for Chelsea. Okay, so it's oh, so they no the power treacherous. Well, Paulo's yeah. called it. The power yeah. is all with FIFA. All player registration must happen in, in uh, where they're in Zurich, eh? Yeah. Or, or uh, Geneva. G- Geneva. No, 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 no. Zurich. Zurich. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, yeah, Zurich. Is it Zurich? Yes, mm. it is. Where are those, those FIFA, offices? FIFA House. Yeah. Biggest yeah. douchebag offices in the world as well. Um, but it, it, Paulo, I, I, I like the woman angle that you're taking there. Uh, the, the female angle. But for... Because where were you with the 48 World Cup thing? So that's 2026. So that's happening. That's happening. Oh, this, that... this eight team World Cup, I mean, two year World Cup is going to happen. Because it is. The voting base sits out of Europe and out of the, the bigger nations. The bigger yeah. nations don't want it. It's an absolute nightmare because what happens at AFCON, what happens with the Euros, what happens with a Comni, but what happens with all of those? How do you restructure the calendar? When is AFCON? AFCON's January. January. 
So now you're gonna have Fcon and the World Cup running concurrently every year. And, and, and every listen, year. And, and listen, let's just go. Well, you see, that's the thing that to sort out. And let's just go like this: This is what's gonna happen with the World Cup cycle. Yeah. One year, Cat, one World Cup Qatar. Next World Cup in a more America, acceptable America, nation. Yeah. Next one in China because that's the big story about that's this. That's what it is, right? Is that China, Qatar, Australia, all the big players, UAE, all these guys can start going. You know what? We can have a World Cup every four years. Here's the money, FIFA, take it. And uh, bring we, your Lord Disney World over here. And we've seen how greedy and disgusting. That's FIFA. what it's all about. That's so we, we're about. done, hey? So why are we even talking about it? It's happening. Forty-eight teams. But if you think about it, the Club World Cup is the same thing. Let's get real. So I'm paddling now. I'm the Taliban. Got some extra money. Some of the oil. You guys probably still need it. Saudi, whatever. Come over here. Let's chat, boys. When is the World Cup going to Afghanistan? 2036. Heard it your first. There we go. It's an exclusive. Breaking exclusive. news, ladies and gentlemen. The Taliban into health and wellness. Also terrorism. Not a good bunch of people. Very similar to the devil and Pontius Pilate. Not good. If you're in the Taliban, you're not a good person. Having said that, because this is a fair show, is that shout out to the Taliban for paddling and looking after their health. Now that's an inspiration, um, even from the worst kinds of people on, on this planet. Do not, do, children, do not do terrorism, but definitely from terrorists, take that. You can paddle, you can paddle, it's good exercise. Now I'm not in the Taliban and I'm gonna paddle into a break. This is the MKT Show.
Idle hands do the devil's work, and that was a guy called Pontius Pilate. He was bored, he didn't have Twitter, he didn't have anything to do, and once he was told what to do, he was like, oh well, don't have Candy Crush, I might as well destroy the fabric of society by, uh, you know, we all know the rest. I mean, what a tragic story. But idle hands do the devil's work. So I think this show has been awesome for sort of raising a better generation. Jo do not at any stage join the Taliban is a take home message, right? No matter how good they become at paddling, don't let them into the Olympics and don't join the Taliban. But second, don't do the devil's work. Don't have idle hands. Senseless Teba, just your thoughts on this show kind of no, yeah, yeah. raising the next generation like that. For sure, for sure. I mean, like also, you know, you, you were saying, you know, guys, it wasn't Judas on his own. You yeah. know what I mean? You, you're trying to be... Accountability. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah, I mean, you got his dad who... Somebody sent him. So he was kind of like the hitman. So Judas was like kind of the hitman. Yes. And they said, bring me that guy. Yeah. And after that, he's like, whatever you do with this guy, I'm not... I've got nothing to do with it anymore. You got him, cheers, I'm out. And then yeah. the rest, they say, is history. So, Paolo, I mean, you do have a, a beautiful daughter. And um, I just want to say to her, she mustn't join the Taliban, right? Number one, I think that that is something I, I, I'm, I can't stress that enough to her. But also, don't do the devil's work with your idle hands. And so, don't have idle hands so that you can't do the devil's work. Just, I, I, that's what I want to get to kids. Your, your thoughts? Children are idiots. And um, they should be treated that way. <laughs> Uh, right, the, the more lessons you give them, the better. Sure. Yeah. I so, was a child. I was an idiot. Yeah. I know this. I, I know from experience. But you said all the time, children need guidance. Yes. We can't be running on marketing, Jay. Like, imagine now we have, we have, we have six-year and seven-year-olds trying to drive your Ferrari. No, what, what does that look like? Also, you're right, because we left them to themselves, and now they're just dancing on TikTok. So we know if you leave kids uh, to their own devices. I mean, how far is the nene from joining the taliban it's such a small leap yeah because but did you but that's what i was saying because there was the one video of the taliban dancing to drake there we go that was fake though was oh, it okay. really fake no no but I it's not it. beyond the realms of possible but children have twitter so do the taliban yes so now they're like what is this and then they say yeah you know what? yo guys how are you guys doing yeah i see you guys are doing bad stuff is i love true? the leap of logic there children have twitter so do the taliban yes. therefore all children belong to the taliban no not belong <laughs> they, no. Are capable of, of, they are capable of joining of, the taliban now a lot of parents paulo actually might say that statement was a great freudian slip there because some people might say their children are terrorists with the way they make them run around and sulk. And I was certainly on the verge of, of being that as a child. But it's not far-fetched because now they've got, you've got such, such thing as child soldiers and stuff. And trust me, they've got like teenagers in the Taliban, right? We don't know that. I don't want to accuse Allegedly. teenagers. Yes, yeah, yeah. Allegedly. No, so, I don't know if they have iPads. There's certainly child so soldiers that we know. You tell me like the Taliban. The Taliban have got like A-grade military equipment. Do you think an iPhone is far-fetched for them? No, it's not. Oh, come on. I don't, and so this show is doing God's work. Come on, bro. Uh, we won't do the devil's work. Do not join the Taliban. But which, which gets to my point. Yes. Let's say, you know, you get a kid in the, in the developed world. Yes. And you get one from the Taliban. Got they you. say, okay, listen, you run our 13, you run our Twitter account, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, and then he speaks <laughs> to one of them. He goes, hi, what's up? Yeah. Uh, and you've got a pen pal from Afghanistan. Little do you know. Yes. Because also, Sensor's making a great point. Remember back in the day when just ordinary women had pen pals that are mass murderers? Like they fell in love. I don't know if you know these stories, right? But back in the day, women would write to mass murderers Charles in prison Manson and, and fell in love with them. Yeah. Like what is... So it's not too far. I'm just saying, Paolo, what's your daughter's phone? She, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, and, and you're Noted. A guy. Yeah. Noted. All right. Um, now, speaking of... <laughs> sort of a level of conflict let's finish off the social media because the golf world for the first time since tiger woods was in his 20s yeah. is electric again um Especially there's a the guy who, who's um he's actually a brainiac uh, by the way matt boffin um physics guy built his, built his own clubs called bryson dechambeau uh, yeah. who is, he, he drinks nine protein shakes a day at a stage i'm not sure if he's still doing that he is massive and smashes the ball now, him and Brooks Kepka not besties. What's going on this thing? Yeah, so Bryson DeChambeau wants to end his long-running feud with US teammate mm -hmm. Brooks Kepka, according to um, DeChambeau's coach Mike Sky. I think that's how you pronounce his surname. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so and then Steve Stricker, the US Ryder Cup captain, was saying, "No, that won't be a problem." So Steve Stricker is probably going to tell them, "Listen, you guys are paired together. That's going to be electric." Oh, is that what they, is that, is that what's happened? No, no, I'm not just saying. But Steve Stricker is saying it won't be a problem. Their beef won't, won't affect 
What's now, going on? Th- th- on that is cricket. a problem as well. A lot of people go, oh, just whatever. Who cares? They're playing a tournament. Now, if you don't watch golf, the Ryder Cup is one of the most electrifying things to watch. You can just watch Sunday if you're not into golf. It yeah. is, e- even if it's all over, it's, it's still it's electrifying to watch. It is box office. Now, these two being together, if you're America, you have to do it. It's great content. Will they keep it together? Imagine Brooks hits uh, one of those wild drives right. Bryson does not like that. Yeah. But like you, you've seen, right, whenever <laughs> one or the other has an interview... And then guys just lose their cool. How, how classic was the one when Brooks just arrived at the course? and uh, No, no, it was uh, Bryson arrived, arrived at the, at the course, course. And Brooks is in the middle of an, of an interview, interview. And Bryson walks past them and he says something. He drops an F-bomb bomb. and he's just like, I'm sorry. Like, they cannot stand. stand it's like Shane Warne and Daryl Cullinan. <laughs> yeah. Right? Is the, He really is his kryptonite. They put Stricker in a, an impossible position here. Because another thing about the Ryder Cup, it's not always, but you do have to be a certain seed and they, they kind of take from a certain pot. Yeah. Is what do you do? They both brilliant. They both box office. They're both gonna save you in uh, match play, right? Yeah. They will save you these guys because they can hit it five five kilometers. What happens now if they have to play together? Good God! Oh, this is this is what I'm here for. Maybe I'm watching the whole thing from Thursday. P- public holiday in South Africa on Friday. I'm watching all of Friday as well. Where is it this year? Um, by the way, um, I cannot wait. Actually, we will talk about the Ryder Cup uh, tomorrow. I wasn't going to, but. I do love uh, Bryson DeChambeau. He is all time. And you know what the problem with these two is? Is that golf, let's face it, trust fund kid game, mostly to be professional. It's at Whistling Straits. Whistling Straits. So in America, uh, an incredible course that I still can't wait to, to, to go there. Uh, of course, famous. Uh, for it's, it's, it's hosted a couple of majors. But I'll tell you what, is trust fund kids, you, you can't tell them what to do. <laughs> you, you, like, it, it, it's not Tiger Woods where, who needed the money in the beginning yeah. and come from a military dad. Bryson went to the Stanford or whatever. He's from yeah. one of those universities and he's a physics guy. Brooks yeah. probably from Texas or whatever. Yeah. And um, I mean, he, well, he had a bit of a situation with, is it Arnold Palmer's daughter? Yeah. Yeah. So he played a little bit of, he played a 19th hole, should we say, um, yeah. unfortunately. And Arnold Palmer, if you haven't heard of him, there's a drink called the Arnold Palmer. Just to know, if you don't know how big he is in golf, all of the golf courses in America, basically, Named after him. This is going to be electric. Paolo, I'm not sure if you're into the golf thing. Not really um, for, for you, I'd imagine, Paolo. But this is box office watching these two. No, no. And Ryder Cup is always quite crazy. And that final day is always something going to happen. So that is that is a thing to put in the calendar. Arnold Palmer's. Are they named after Arnold Palmer? Is that like the legit? Arnold Palmer? Yeah. Yep. I thought that was just like a coincidence. Coinky like, dinky. No. No. no, no, no. But uh, yeah, Brooks. Good stuff. Ooh, he, yeah, three putted. In that situation, if you know, if you know what I mean, and it's been a whole thing, it's public now. Oh man, that's ugly. So that that's awesome, dude. I, I hope they pair them together. They have to, and then, uh, but but it's gonna go off, right? It, 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 so because they're both douchebags, <laughs> and I love that. Those about guys are gonna put hands on each other. <laughs> they are. I'm telling you, they're gonna. It's gonna come to blows. Because you know, Brooks just needs to say, "How did you get it there?" or whatever. And like, what are you doing, bro? Ugh. I'm watching. I'm watching the whole thing. All right. Uh, it's it's Tuesday, and I thought, you know what we should do is a little thing called the Premier League was on this weekend. Um, now, Paulo, you sent in an, <laughs> one of the most electrifying videos I've ever seen in terms of if you can't be... Uh, let's start with United. You know, is if you can't be good, be lucky. Is what You've always said this. You've held firm from when we started the show uh, about a year ago. You've even said about um, your, your mate, Ollie, is if you can't be good, be lucky. That is the most outrageous football game I've seen. Just the ups and downs and Luke Shaw handball at the end and Ronaldo being denied. is like, what is going on there? United's box office, you know, like it or not. You entertainment. Know. So there's always entertainment. That's why everyone watches us. So it's why Did everyone hates see, us. Have you seen the TikToks behind the West Ham? Go- uh, so the West Ham end when uh, Noble was taking the penalty. Yeah, he doesn't miss. He doesn't miss. And they go, yeah. It was the funniest thing ever. You know, Umbelena, I've been wanting to ask you this. And, yeah. I, and I think, I mean, you, you've, you know, were exposed to footballers at a high level. Mm-hmm. This idea, and um, Gareth Southgate did it in the Euro as well, of bringing on players just for penalties at such a crucial juncture. I, mean, I think what Gareth did, Gareth Southgate did with Marcus Rashford and them, I mean, he completely sank them. Yeah. I mean, he put them in the deep uh, he, he, that, that was He set them up, yeah. He set them up for that. It was ridiculous. Uh, uh, the West Ham situation was was, was a little less high high, uh, high high lower risk, right? Yeah, it's just a normal league game. For I mean, surely a player, no matter who you are, probably only five players in the world could come on in that situation and score the penalty. Yeah, 
you're just setting up a player to fail. But the, also, going back to your point about the England thing, do you know what, the, what made it worse for them? Is that Harry Kane, the guy who should be taking that pressure penalty, he took the easiest one. Look, that's, that's a whole different, you know, they probably set up those numbers. But yeah. Paolo, I take your point in, in that for, for, I cannot remember Alex Ferguson ever doing that. I cannot remember uh, Arsene Wenger ever doing that. And they would have had last minute penalties. Let, 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 let's be very clear. In their careers with that Aberdeen, I can't remember Pep Guardiola ever doing that. Um, what I'm thinking here is manage the situation. And David Moyes, if... Uh, who's the penalty taker without it? Probably who, who was it? It's on? probably Antonio. Lanzini and Antonio was Antonio, there. yeah. So, so it's two penalty takers weren't available. Um, and a lot of people likening it to American football. Yeah. I said, but it's not the same. American football, a guy who's a kicker from young has been bought on in that that's his job. You you can't come. No, yeah, but, it's but, but, near but also, but also, I also give the blame to Declan Rice because he was captain on the day. Declan Rice apparently is a penalty taker as well. So I, uh, I, I would have, to, if I was Declan Rice, let me do well, it. He's got the flow of the game, but he missed. Yeah, Declan he's got Rice the has missed. No, but I think, think I think in that situation it is, and and this is why you see chaos is um is the friend of leadership, right? It's mm. in that time, it's on Moyes. It's not on Declan Rice. It's not on a twenty-three-year-old, folks. At every club, in in the pressure moments, that's why we love Fergie. In crisis, uh, I remember the Tottenham game, 3-0 down half-time, right? 3-0. That's on Fergie. I'm, oh, 3-0, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, taking yeah. this over, 5-3. Yeah. Is in those moments, you can't be looking. And, and it's why, man, I love military. The military here is perfect. There's one general. He takes all of the responsibility. You know why? Because you get all of the glory. That's is, correct. For David Moyes in that situation, that is all on him. And for me, Paolo, for, for, from what you're saying, it is madness what happened there. It is, it is, to put Mark Noble in that situation is absolute, it's unthinkable as a player. Yeah, because also if you say no as Mark Noble, like... No, 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 no there's no... Yeah, I'm look, just he's, saying... He's never saying no. No, but I'm just saying, like, if you say no as Mark Noble, um, David Moyes must be like, okay, you... Oh, so, you know, the the broader thing here, and, and it was, actually, it was something I was reading actually before uh, United's game in Europe last week about the next evolution in football right yeah. so we had spain had that first one and then germany were leading it the next evolution and naturally it comes from italy who yeah. are the preeminent team winning mm. trophies yeah, yeah. right and the next tactical evolution is coming from italy so they say watch what's happening in italy and that's where you see the games are going to come that's where the great thinkers are all the italian coaches go through that finishing school yeah. in italy sure. and that's where the, the the good thinkers are and, and, and not even just there, this coach has peppered around Europe, Sergio Concesao came through that finishing school. What they're saying that involves is that 90% of footballers now, pro footballers, yeah. come out of academies. Yes. So they are, they polished, they finished off, they're tactically clever, technically brilliant, can play multiple positions. And what they're saying is that next tactical evolution actually comes in, your manager is actually less of an influence on a game. Mm. If you think about Mancini, what did Mancini actually do with Italy? Got you. Did he ever do anything that you go, great substitution, great intervention? And you watched with Solskjaer, once he intervened in that United game, well, you've made a mess of it. Got you. Mm. Leave the players and Moyes as well. Once he intervenes, and I think you're starting to get into the stage of where you've got Pep, who is a hyper micromanager, yeah. and Klopp, who's this hyper mi micromanager, but let's go more cl uh, Pep. Tuchel's a little bit less of it. Tuchel will intervene in a game. But other than that, he's leaving the players to do what the instructions are. Mm. And I, when you start to see managers now, you're becoming very aware of it. You're going, when the managers actually intervene, they're actually making problems. There's well less times when a manager's actually changing things. And this is why Chelsea's so scary. Because Tuchel's got that knack of knowing when to intervene at the right time. Mm. Otherwise, you guys deal with it. You sort it out. And for the most part, you talk about Ferguson. That's what he was like. Yeah, he was. You sort it out. I'm not worried. Sort it out. You yeah. know what to do. You've got the character. You guys can execute. That's it. And I think we're starting to Great see that. Point. Yeah. When yeah. managers are intervening, they're actually ruining things. And, and you know what? It's, it's a great point. Even, even if you look at uh, business, the guys that are, are, are dynamic now, it's that hire the smartest people. Like, like stop thinking. Like back in the day, we always used to love the hardworking guy on his own. Like I was watching a thing with Jeff Bezos to your point is that he says, no, I get lots of sleep at night because I want to make two or three decisions a day now. 
all of them at a, an executive level because education's better access to these things these footballers have probably been through more situations than any manager will be able to go through in his coaching training like you say it's automated now mm. is it's so sophisticated now by the time players get to the top now Forget 10,000 hours. Well, they've, they've done 20,000 They've hours. had that when they're 14. By mm. the time they're 14, they've done the 10,000 hours. So there's a loss of that street footballer. Yeah. But it's almost like now the, the, it's, it's, automation is a perfect thing. And in the world, automation is becoming a thing. Well said. And but, in football, you know, that's where we're going. But also you made a very good point, which goes back to your point that you... I don't know if you said it on the show or you were talking to me about when we lost that Champions League game. It's... And then one Bissak against that red card. It's five minutes before half time. Let's see how it goes. Instead of yanking every mm. player off, like you know what I mean. Trust, trust the players. They, trust the players. They let, know what let to let do. Them work it out. And that's the military, by the way. Again, another the military is we've already laid out the game plan. Go and execute, guys. Is the general doesn't now get in an, in an MV truck and drive down and say, guys, I told you to turn <laughs> and he's left. Armed, here. Or he's armed. Yeah, now and he's lock and loaded. No, he's at <laughs> comms, right? He's communicating the strategy. Oh, the threats are coming from here, but he's not getting, he's not taking a gun to the field, which is what, it's such a good point. It almost feels like Moyes wanted to go on the field and score the penalty himself. That's what it kind of but looks shout like. Shout out to David Moyes, finally making decisions that one Man United game. So, <laughs> shout out to David How Moyes. long have you been waiting to use that one? Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, you've had that one. Hey, did that wake you up at like 2.30 in the morning and you thought, <laughs> he's done it now. They don't know me. They don't know me. I'm all gear. The, no, I saw from somewhere. Uh, yeah, but he's the manager we deserve now. What a legend of the game. Hey, shout out to him. Um, Newcastle leads. Not sure if either of you guys saw that. Oh, yeah. It's cracking game, by the way. Cracking but Newcastle. Game. And Newcastle are in more trouble. Like, it's very serious in Newcastle now. I, I think, do. I, I think between... So, between him, Arteta, and Ronald Koeman, one of the three is going to be the first major scalp. Like, the first, first major scalp. But why would Mike Major Ashley? Why, why would Ashley fire him? That that works against him because he, if he's trying to sell, is you don't want to be the guy that sacks Steve Bruce or yeah, even but, Ashley. I don't think Ashley has any intention of. So why disrupt? Yeah, but they've what's been. Happening? But the yeah. fans have been getting on. Uh, but Mike Ashley doesn't care. No, about the fans. Okay. yeah, no. There's. Ma, Ma, but they've been getting on Steve Bruce. Eh? Mike Ashley, if you finish seventeenth, I don't care how you do it. I don't care what the Just fans survive. say. Just, and we're talking about people not intervening. Mm. Mike Ashley's like, you've got your job, you do it. I don't think he really cares what the fans say. I don't think, as long as Bruce finishes 17th. I saw this crazy stat about the, 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 the teams who've been in the Premier League the longest. And Newcastle's up there in the top 10. They've spent a lot of time in the Premier League. We tend to think about the years that they go down. Yeah. You know, they've established themselves as a Premier League club. Sure, there should be more. But why? They haven't been more since... Ever. ever they've never been more <laughs> they've never you know go back oh the last trophy in the 60s what the european fairs cup yeah what no, was that even do you, know, you know it's true. like a dog show do you trophy. know when you watch newcastle right they play they play they play they kind of you know they kind of arm wrestle for a bit in the game and you're just like oh and you think maybe maybe yes. not and then it's when let's say they score to go level and then once they concede that second one to go behind again that's where it all where it just all goes flat you know what? I'm so vulnerable. You guys are making such good points. And I'm not humble enough to realize how vulnerable I am. And Paolo, you've just made me have an existential crisis. Am I connected to Newcastle because of the greatest film trilogy of all time? Obviously, uh, Santiago, Santiago Munes, obviously taking me to the screens and into the hearts of Newcastle. Is that, am I looking at them through that Hollywood lens? Because that can, can we all agree that that's top five greatest movies of all time, especially as a trilogy, Santiago Munes' journey from nowhere mm. to Newcastle to Uriah Marie. You know what? It's not even that. We're of the generation of that great Newcastle team. Uh, of, you know, Les Asprey. Ferdinand, Ginola, Asprilla, Raw Fox. Oh, no, no, know, Solana came off. Gary after. Speed. Gary Speed. You know, that, that sort of... But, the, but that Newcastle team that pushed United and were... Keep Keegan's Gillespie's Newcastle. in that team. And we of that generation that what, that Newcastle were entertainers. Like, who's that level of entertainer now? I don't even think we have it in the Premier League. I don't think we have that level of... There isn't tag. A team that you you have to watch them because they play so well. Because Pep, Pep isn't entertaining. It's not entertaining. It's actually very clinical. It's, yeah. it's almost... It's like watching the... the um, like you were talking about now. What's happened with Pep now, because now not only does he have Barcelona, obviously he takes the yeah. show on the road. You know, it's Catalonia FC, wherever he goes. But it's actually... You know what? Everywhere where there was a deficiency at Barcelona, I don't, ha I don't need a Gerard Piquet. I'm filling in with mm. Diaz. So all of the stuff that he dreamt of when they were killing it was Xavi and the guys, where he thought, you know what, Busquets actually isn't ideal. 
Fernandinho. Let me. Do you know? And, and there was no know? legacy for Pep at City before. You know, Barcelona's got a. Ex- expectation yeah and even they weren't exciting actually yeah. city, city the, don't they, do you know and, and they blame sorry sorry they, they blame pep football and this efficiency for why fans don't come to city because they go it's not it's winning but yeah. it's cool. do you, know, do you know kind of do you know what the closest thing we have to that is it's leicester now hobby bonds hobby bonds Vardy. no that newcastle team so? I know, I know nostalgia can can blur your vision, but that Newcastle team was, no. they were something else. They yeah, were. Vardy's not is not exciting. A, a Sprilla would hit a vol, like it would dribble three guys, and when he's in one on one, go for the lob. Like, like Tottenham, it, maybe. Like Vardy's. It's, no. It, not, it, it, imagine Newcastle with six Saint Maximon. Yeah, it was like that. A whole front line of Saint Maximon. Actually, eleven Saint Maximon. That's what Newcastle were like. Now, uh, I was about to ask you this is. Uh, there we go. Uh, Fantasy Football Ninja has just tweeted the greatest thing I- I've ever seen is just caught up on the Newcastle versus Leeds highlights, or should I say, Saint Maximum versus Leeds? What a game he had! Now I was going to ask you: Is he a lie? Is he what's going on at Saint Maximum? Because remember, he had a Gucci headband uh, when he was at uh, Milan, and he had to take that off or cover it. Yeah, now it's not the Gucci one. Yeah. Obviously, we know. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Lord Bentner who uh, got fined. I think it was was it a hundred thousand pounds for wearing the underwear, the Paddy Power underwear. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Premier League won't, won't, certainly won't tolerate that. Uh, so Maxima, a lie? Real? What are we doing there, Paolo? I hope he never changes. <laughs> you know what? It's a pleasure. You know we're talking about academy footballers versus street footballers. He's a street footballer. He is so street. It's lovely. You don't see that stuff. You'll take uh, eight guys. Eight and then fall over. A fall over. I, 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 you know what? That, that, that's what I say. That's what that early Newcastle side was like. 11 of him. Yeah. Just going for it. I don't... I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going there. That's where I'm going. That's where I want to be. I don't know how I'll get there. What a team that was, huh? Newcastle. Proper yeah. entertainers. I'd love it. I'd That's... love it. Hey, but they also used to score screamers, eh? No, but it was crazy for Solano. It, it, Solano used to hit crackers. You know, that team you're talking about is that when you when you do capture that, it, it was like, uh, do you remember Real Batiste when they just had Danielson? The, mm. the first proper iteration... Most and expensive they played, signing. They played a genuine 4 2 4. There was one season where Joaquin and Danielson did it. Yeah. Just one season. Oh, yeah, and they were just dribbling everything on. <laughs> and it was Joaquin, and I forget who they had in the middle, uh, but they had some. It's just unplayable, and yet you, you couldn't and play it. And Danielson was the most expensive player in the world. He, there was one season. I, I don't know if it was the first one or whenever, but he tailed off as, you, you know, classic uh, flair player. Well, but we're never going to see that again. Eh? It's too far gone. You, you just can't do it because the risk is too high. They, they like to have Genola and Espia and, and Carr. It's, and... Yeah, it's, it's, it's over-swagulating. <laughs> it's over-swagulating. <laughs> it's too much. Uh, too much sauce. Uh, too much sauce. Eh? It ain't going to happen. All right, Senzo, let's take some questions from uh, the, the, the YouTube yeah, comments. Yeah, sure, I mean, man. Yeah, see, you it's... know, there's a lot of results. I, I think we all know what happened. Um, maybe I'll quickly... Go through it. Wolves lost yeah. uh, to Brentford. Shout out to Brentford. Uh, Norwich, Watford. Uh, that that is that that is. Norwich are Norwich are so interesting because that was, I mean, typical six pointers so early in the season. Yeah. Norwich have got this weird model of where they built. They've actually built their business model around promotion and relegation in, in successive yes. seasons. Mm. So they'll go up, get the money to keep the players, go down, make sure they keep them, go up. And I was listening to the director of football of going, that's actually our business model. We built to spend the next 10, 12 years going up and down through the divisions and it's fine for us. And people are now questioning the integrity of that because, well, wh- you know, what's what's the aim of a team like Norwich to become a Burnley? Yeah. Because Burnley's now at that stage. At Stoke were, we go, oh, we're actually bored of being a Premier League team. We want yeah. some excitement. Well, yeah. that second you change, you're going down. So it's such a weird play. And then once you go down, the Derby, the Der- Derbies and Nottingham Forest and things like that, where do we end with this whole thing? So Norwich is a very interesting model. I guess it's like Hollywood, right? Is um, you, you know, is you can make uh, what what we want play football for the football. That's art. That's art by the artist for the artist. Can't do that forever. Uh, Man United's the king now. That's the model. And if you have to be your own Man United, keep it about the money. I, yeah. I don't hate Norwich for doing that. I, no, I don't no, think I, it's unethical. I think I think it's fine. You know, I think it's like if. I, I, I think as a business, they want to be 13th in the Premier League every season and the businessmen couldn't care less. 
I want to finish off on the biggest result, obviously, of the weekend, but we'll quickly go through there. Man City, Southampton's uh, mm. couldn't get any fans there. Pep, um, obviously, trying to become a PR company now. Shout out to him. Should probably uh, get... Who's the guys that uh, did the Gupta thing? Yeah, Bell Pottinger. Bell Pottinger, probably, <laughs> um, Pep, and maybe you just stop talking about that and maybe go coach. Uh, Liverpool, Crystal Palace, 3-0 there. Shout out uh, Sadio Mane and Mo Salah. They're doing what they're doing. Aston Villa, uh, shocking Everton, 3-0. Uh, Brighton... A great result. Listen, they're on to something there. Mm, uh, mm, quietly. Leicester, Brendan Rodgers, third season syndrome. He does it at every club. Um, West Ham, obviously, Man United, Cristiano Ronaldo doing all the diving in the world. Luke Shaw, obviously, handball. But David De Gea is the greatest keeper of all time, saving his third uh, penalty. But I want to finish off on this one as we wrap up the show, folks. Arsenal aren't getting enough credit because they've won two big six pointers in a row now. They've beaten Norwich and they've gone and beaten Burnley away. Why are we no, going to talk no. about Arsenal being maybe the best team in the Premier League? Dude, they're on a two-game winning streak. Like it's it's hot. This is what's this up. is the turning. This is the turning of the corner. Mikel Arteta, possibly the next Pep Guardiola, you know because I mean? he's won two pressure cookers on the bounce. Yeah, one 0 Paolo, I'd just like to know what you think because I don't think Arsenal are getting the credit they deserve after getting a magnificent result at Burnley with a crack of a goal. Yeah, so there's that as well. I think they'll be okay. I think Arsenal will be okay. They won't do anything, but I don't think it's as terrible as everyone wants to make it so out. So you think it's not crisis? No, I don't think there's any crisis. 10th? Arsenal? Where do they No, fit? I think higher than that. And, you know, Arsenal, unfortunately, their ceiling now is higher than Spurs. And I think that's what they'll take as a good season. Uh, comfortable 7th, Arsenal. Above uh, Spurs? And above Leicester. I think they got a bit more than than, than those teams around. Because now Spurs have been found out. Now the 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 because the, they were first. Now the slide is coming. And oh, don't, you must be delighted. And don't underestimate the the sort of like time yeah. that not being in Europe is for a coach like Arteta. He's got a young squad. Yeah. Impressionable. He can spend the time with them in midweek instead of you know going all over Europe. So you know sometimes he hopefully takes advantage of that. Maybe, Seems a good guy. Hey, he does seem like a good guy. You know what he's saying to them is, guys. <laughs> you have a squat. Yeah, you all uh, you have you're players. Young. You're young. Uh, it's a youth. It's a system. Uh, my hair is unbelievable. We play football like eh? We get in the top six. Don't lose the passion. That's Pep Guardiola. Don't forget about this club. Oh, that, that's our theater. Yeah. Don't forget it's about it. this club. It's the Gunners. The Gunners. <laughs> the history. You guys want to play in the Premier League? I've been here. It's a, it's a mentality. It's a squat. It's our winning. I've been here with a pride in North London. I was so scared. What do you tell you? So, it's an outstanding accent. You know, so that's what he's telling. I don't me. like accents, but that's phenomenal. Paulo <laughs> Diaz, that's what I play. You're a legend. Are you back with us on Thursday, Paulo? Um, if I'm allowed out the house, yes, then I will. Be <laughs> Friday is a holiday. Um, you know, it is. It is about heritage. And Paulo, obviously, because he can't stand anything Portuguese, you, uh, what are you probably going to do? Go for an Italian? Probably get yeah, a pizza. No, just, exactly. Just no, to tr- the down trot and each other. Scop. It's scop. <laughs> 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 Unbelievable. So this is time, uh, great stuff, Paul. Uh, yeah. We'll see you in the morrow. To the boys in the back, shout out. Uh, holding it down to Sipo, shout out to you. Before we go, Yondandigi says, uh, MKT, let's do a golf invite uh, for the MKT show here in the Cape. Now, I don't like that invite because <laughs> we're in the Cape. Because that could be the Eastern Cape and mm. you can get the hell out of here. I, I didn't cause <laughs> There's no way I'm going to the Eastern Cape. So, Yonder, you tried there, buddy. If you are, you, you, you know what I mean? Why, 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 listen, 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 listen. What? Linda, Linda, listen, Linda. What's, listen. what's, what's with Cossa guys when they get out of the EC? They're like, I am not going back. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> I know that devil. No way. No way. So, Yonder, that's smart. Try to catch me out. Uh, forget it. Forget, hey, forget it. Absolutely. Uneasy. For, uh, not me. Not me, chap. Not me. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is MKT. This has been uh, the MKT Show. And to all the guys in the studio, appreciate all of you. Paolo, awesome having you here. Senzo, great stuff. Once again, uh, to our, to our uh, floor operator, uh, Zulu Warrior. Uh, he's in a great shirt today. Um, shout out to Sipo. He's in a great uh, shirt. Looks like a professional. I wish his mom could see him because she will go to church this Sunday and go, my son looks incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, my name, MKT. This is the MKT Show. But for now, we are the hell. Are you?